Well, that was a little bit awkward. Sorry about that, gang. What's going on? Um, well, that's one way to uh, piss off about 200 people. So let's figure this out. Let's do the math on this. We had 200 people. And they were there for 20 minutes. That's 4,000 minutes. Okay. 4,000 minutes. We'll divide that by 24 hours in the day. Or no, excuse me. We would have to divide that by 60 per hour. And then we'll divide that by 24. I just wasted 2.7 days of your life. I'm sorry. I'll pay you back. I promise. Send your hate mail to growmousehatemail at hatemail dot hatemail. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. I'm Growmouse. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you kind of being patient with me and, and waiting for the stream to get going. This is the correct stream. If you're listening right now, if you're listening on the playback, I'll leave this video up for you guys. And if you look to the comments section, I'll leave a pinned comment that has little timestamps of where you can find the pertinent information for the stream. What this stream is, I'm talking Vera 29s, which is a chip on board LED by Bridge Lux. And they're getting pretty popular because they're getting pretty efficient and they're like 25 bucks. And you can get them from just about anywhere online. You just Google Bridge Lux Vera 29. A lot of people carrying them and they're carrying them within a dollar or so of each other. Um, so I, I could see it as being pretty popular. And the catalyst for this video was some information that Green Gene released. Um, I was never really hot on Veros. I was always big into the Crees because I had the data on the Crees. And Green Gene over at PacificLightConcepts.com released some integrating sphere data, which is like a laboratory grade measurement device that tells you how good a light is. And uh, apparently these things are pretty good. They're running about 1.9 micromoles per joule, uh, maybe a little higher. If you drop the drive current, you can get up to about 2.0 micromoles per, per joule. And for a $25 chip, I think that's pretty good. So I am basically planning a video, a produced video that I'll uh, have down at about 15 minutes or so. So what this stream is, it's just an opportunity to hang out with all of you and uh, just chill on a Sunday. And you guys can watch me as I research um, this cob, which I'm very familiar with. But when you're putting out a video that's really technical and telling people how to do stuff, um, many people will probably end up opening their wallets and spending money somewhere online. And I don't want them to waste it because I messed up. So uh, that's what's going on. Uh, again, if you're just now joining us, this video will be recorded for playback and you can check the comments section for a pinned comment by me, giving you little, uh, little time markers of where you can find uh, all the info. So let me say hi to my live chat room. I know you guys love it when I pop up live streams with no advance notice. So, um, but hey, you know, I can either do them or not do them. So I'm in the mood to do one. So here we are and we're doing one. So. Got all my mods in the house, a lot of blue wrenches helping me out. Um, it's it's not really for moderation. Everybody tends to be really cool when they come here because they need what's inside my brain and um, they tend to be kind of nice. So it's more just recognition that like yeah, you guys have been around for a long time, supporting the videos, commenting on the videos. And so that's what it's about. Uh, I probably missed a lot of people and we'll do that in the next chill session. We'll wrench some people up. But for now, I need to stay focused. Uh, howdy, Twistafarian, Stink Bomb Mink, Chrissy. We got Hugo and Hustle King in the house. Wookie Kush, my man, and Norwegian Frog, Matthew McConnell, and W Micro, Mass Affected. What's up, brother? Um, Palm Side Extracts, been seeing around, and my man, Growing Cali Dank. So, if you guys are interested in LEDs, chip on board LEDs, um, this one's for you. It's Veros. Obviously, I've been a Cree guy. And Cree chips have come down a lot in price, but they're still sitting in that $36 range when you add a $2.50 cob holder to it and you know stuff like that. Let's just call it 40 for all practical purposes. And a Vera 29 is 25. So you know when you're doing a dozen of those things, you can save a considerable amount of money by going for the Veros. And uh, why all of a sudden Vero? Well, I like to keep an open mind about things. Um, the cost is about 35% less than Cree, and they're very good. Um, you can achieve potentially a little higher efficiency with the Cree if you run them real soft. They perform really well down at those low drive currents. Um, but, you know, not everybody's into that. A lot of people just want to get a build going that's affordable, that they can build themselves. So what you're looking at behind me is a little rail system that Rapid LED is coming out with. Um, it's not like a product by me or anything, but they did send me a little sneak peek so I can try to fit some quantum boards and some chilled boards and things like that to it. So before I get too much further into this stream with 238 of my closest friends, can you guys hear me okay? How's the audio level? 
I'm assuming you can hear me. Otherwise, there'd be like little pitchfork. Is there a is there a pitchfork emoji? <laughs> there should be. Hold on. Let's let's check this out. Let's go. Colon pitchfork. No, there is not. Okay. So uh, it's good. It's good. It's perfect. Great. Fantastic. Welcome. Um, as I'm getting into the Vera 29s, I got my webcam up and we're going to go into a little screen share. So uh, unfortunately, my streaming software is not uh, it's not behaving as uh, you probably noticed from the 20 minute silent live stream. It was like some uh, what what are the oh geez, I shouldn't make references when I don't know the, the name of the guys Abbott Costello. Um, so we're going to be toggling between webcam and some data sheets. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a data sheet for the Bridge Lux Vero. So I hope to keep this stream fairly fast paced, but um, this is just me researching and I could research this alone. Um, or I could research it with you guys hanging out, watching, hanging out with each other, having a good time. So um, here we go. I think I'm going to, yes, I'm going to swap these two items. Swap these two items here. I got a couple screens. I really need some new monitors. I'm a monist. Um, here we go. Here we go. Screen share initiate. Present to everyone. There we go. No. <laughs> Sorry, gang. Maybe I... Um, Maybe I smoke too much weed today. There we go. There we go. Okay. There we go, gang. Uh, yep. Okay. So we're over here in Google. We just Googled Vero 29 Gen 7. First link by Bridge Lux, the company that makes Vero. And we got a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheets have a beautiful, pretty picture and some big font on the first page. And the more you scroll down, the more your brain starts to hurt because you see a lot of codes and item numbers and the font gets smaller and smaller. And the, there's... 27 pages about a little LED, which seems very overwhelming to people. So we're going to take a quick pit stop on page number four of this spreadsheet. And I'm going to take some notes as I talk. So basically what I'll be doing for the stream is just kind of talking as I write. Um, so if we look at these bin codes, obviously the first four letters here are just saying that it's a Bridge Lux product. The second are very important. They are abbreviating the Kelvin, uh, which is the color temperature of the LED. So 2,700, it would be a 20 here. Obviously, this example is a 3,000 Kelvin, so it's a good choice for your flowering. Uh, 35, 40, 50, et cetera, et cetera. So there's that. The next one is the CRI. Obviously, this one here is a 80 CRI. C is a 70 and G is 90. So um, as you go higher in CR CRI, the phosphor, which is the yellow coating, tends to be a little thicker. It basically, it's like a lens and it blocks a little more light. So you go a little higher in CRI, you maybe get a better spectrum, but you get less total photons. So a lot of people out there are experimenting with a mixed setup of a, a few uh, few 90 CRI. Like if you look at Wookie Kush's um, channel, he's in chat. He has a mixture of 90 CRI and 80 CRI. That's so that it's a good balance of photon output and giving him that little bit of that color because he has 16 cobs in his setup. Now his are citizen, but they very well could be bridge lux. Um, as we go in here, I wouldn't worry too much about flux indicator. I wouldn't uh, worry too much about these next one. But this one's pretty important, this letter here. And it's going to be B, C, or D. And I believe, I don't know what the notation is for the SE, but I'll talk about the SE as well when we toggle back over to the webcam. One of the big advantages to Bridge Lux Veros is that it includes its own cob holder, an item that normally would cost you $2.50 with a Cree. Um, so, you know, $2.50 times 10 is 25 bucks, and that adds up. Um, so this integrated cob holder allows you to just put your screws right around the perimeter, and your traditional Vero either has solder points at the top, but nobody likes to solder. So you buy something called a Molex Pico EasyMate, which is just a snap-on quick connect, which is really nice because if you're sliding your cobs or moving them or something, you don't have to desolder or, you know, pull the wire out of the cob holder. It's got a little quick connect. There is a new product on the market, and it's called a Vero 29 SE. I believe that just stands for Special Edition. It has the same cob holder integration, but it has the Pokin uh, type connectors. So you would not need this Easy Mate with the SE. And sometimes you'll see them for uh, the same price or $1 to $2 more. Maybe it'll be $27 bucks instead of $25. Uh, finally, we've got the Gen 7, and that is what we're talking about. I would not fuck with anything less than Gen 7 right now. 
for like, even if you're going to save three bucks, what's the point, right? Because these are very good and it's the newest stuff. Um, CCT bin options. I believe that is the method in which they bin these, uh, collect the color. That would be more important if you're trying to like light your hotel, the exact same color or your atrium, the exact same color. So for us, we don't really care. Plants don't care. Okay. So as we get further into the spreadsheet, we've got all these numbers. Um, and it's very confusing. There's all these codes, but if we take a brief moment and maybe print this out, um, that explains, this is like a legend that explains what this stuff is and had it on our desk. Um, that might be something you should consider, or at very least have this window open as you're selecting your cobs so that you can read this gibberish and it makes sense to you guys. Um, I am going to catch up with my chat room because I love my chat room. <laughs> Grandmaster level, welcome, welcome. Good hanging out with you the other day. Grandmaster level will not be making an appearance on this live stream because um, I think that one night, two and a half hours worth of hazing the new guy is probably enough for one man. So shout out and respect to Grandmaster level. Uh, we got Johnny C in the house. Welcome, buddy. He's really excited about LEDs. He's trying to absorb everything he can. Zooey and Slammer what's going on tent grower and we got cutter electronics in the house so uh mark over cutter great guy one of my favorite suppliers you can always count on cutter electronics to carry the top flux bin um, or at, at the very least give you the option for the top flux bin on a lot of the popular diodes including the cree xpe he top flux bin so that's that's where i get that stuff and um he's got a lot of cool boards so cutter.com.au Cutter Electronics, yeah, CutterElectronics.com.au is a great source for all kinds of cool parts. And uh, there's some other Bridge Lux parts that uh, Cutter carries now, which are these Bridge Lux EB, as in like Elephant Boy. Um, and they're a very affordable um, strip. And um, I don't know, Mark, have you done a video on the Bridge Lux EB? Um, I mean, it's, I, I haven't messed with them, man, but it seems like a, the perfect solution for people trying to get out of high output T5s and into a um and into an led in fact let's take a look over at cutter there we go it's just cutter.com.au i'm sorry i i i guess it's like when you uh you don't know your mom's phone number because you just hit mom and so you don't know what the numbers are maybe that's why it is with cutter i just hit c and enter um okay let's let's look at let's look over here on the cutter website and this is just a quick diversion because i think it is relevant um we're looking for strip LEDs. We're looking for linear PCBs. I feel very nervous right now as the owner of the company is watching me struggle slightly to uh, navigate the website, but that's okay. That's okay. I will look like an idiot so that you guys can be super smart, fast, and efficient as you shop over at Cutter Electronics. So uh, Cutter's got some linear XPE. So if you want to get your reds in a linear, that's great. Uh, looks like they got their own in-house uh, 63 watt strip, which is great. But for the little clone lights, I really think these people are going to be wanting to uh, get these like 18 to 20 dollar bridge lux EB because uh, they're looking pretty good. Do we have this on the site, Mark? I probably should have checked to see if we had this on the site before I went to the site and started talking up. Oh my God! Let's just uh, let's just do a quick search for E. B. You see how I like to tr sound like super professional as I'm transitioning while I'm fumbling? Here we go. Okay. So as you guys can see, BridgeLux makes a linear strip and it's really freaking affordable. Um, they come in different lengths and that length is denoted somewhere in here. So like this one that says 280, that'll be like 280 millimeters. And this one here looks like it's a 560 for nine bucks US, $12 Australian. The bold price is uh, Aussie dollars. So our, our dollar is a little stronger right now. So uh, look at the bottom price of the US, Europe, or Great, Great British pounds. Um, getting up to 160 lumens per watt, which is exceptional. Um, so I'll probably have to do a full video on this, Mark. Let's get together on that and figure out what we can do. Um, but in the meantime, let's get back to the Vero. But just keep in your head that BridgeLux is a, a really good supplier. And um, they're very robust and affordable LED. And that's the name of their game. Back to the Vero's 29s. Okay. So we're back in product selection. Uh, I hope you like, did you guys like that cutter commercial? <laughs> Quick impromptu cutter commercial. Mm. Yeah, cutter's taking real good care of me over the years. And I know taking care of, uh, of you guys too. So back into Vera 29s, we're trying to decipher all this gibberish. And basically what we're trying to figure out is what all these numbers mean. So you can see here, 
all the numbers are they're kind of categorized by like 2700k 3000k etc but the thing that you're going to notice is a little different is there's a b here a c here a d here b c d b c d b c d and those are the three different type of arrow 29s and i want to try to find where that uh where that goes and i'm writing this down and educating myself as i talk so i don't have all this like fully memorized yet so this would be a good spot for this okay so here's here's a chart that makes sense so there's three different types of arrows um with Cree, there were the 36 and the 72 volt. Most people favored the 36 volt because that's what was in stock. There are six half dozen, what's the saying? Six half dozen and one of the other. What is that saying? Chat room, help me. Six, six half dozen. I don't know what the saying is, but you guys know the saying that I'm talking about. So that's what, with Cree, it was 36 and 72, and you could achieve the same wattage by either using half the current or double the current. With Bridgelux, it's really similar. There is a B, a C, and a D, and those refer to different voltages of that chip on board LED. So the B here looks like they're running about 52 volts. So if, um, if you guys take your quick calculation to get your watts, to get how many watts you're gonna get out of a cop, you take the voltage times the current. So if we take a 50 volt LED and we multiply that by one amp, we get 50 watts. If we take a 50 volt LED, we multiply that by two amps, we get 100 watts. So that's why this is relevant and that's why this is important. Um, the 52 volt cob, if we take our 52 volt cob and we run it at our standard drive current that a lot of people are comfortable with, which is 1.4 amps or 1400 milliamps, we end up with 72.8 watts per cob, which is more than you're, you're getting out of your 36 volt Cree. So if you have any questions about that in chat, um, go ahead and ask now. Uh, or if you're watching this on the playback, you can, uh, you know, type comment or whatever. Um, if we go down to the C version, you can see the voltage goes up. That's actually a 69.4 volt um, at these various drive currents. So at 1700 milliamps, we're at 69.4. And this is something that I oversimplify um, a lot of the time. If it's a 36 volt cob, I just say 36 volts because it's easier. But in fact, cobs use less, cobs require less voltage the lower the current. So you can look in this chart, this is page nine, and um, I'll have this linked up in the video down in the description. And you can look at the voltage you're thinking about. It has the popular drive currents that we're used to running. So 1,050 or 1,400, you can see only requires 37 volts. But if you're up at 2,100, you need 38. If you're going to push them to the max at 4.2 amps, it takes 42 volts. So there's a little wiggle room in there. And, it, and I think this would be very important to master this and look at this chart. And I will include this chart in the, like the produced video because Veros aren't a clean 36. They don't necessarily match up with every mean well like a Cree does. So depending on the current of the driver, you're really going to want to pinpoint the exact forward voltage so that you can properly match these things so you don't end up buying a driver that you think is going to run seven cobs and it only runs six so um we'll, we'll get into a little more detail with that but i think mainly what we're going to be talking about is the d version veros which are like their 36 volt version we're going to be talking about the se's which are also in that 36 to 38 volt range but i think we also have to talk about these b versions and the B is important and the B is relevant because I recommend these all the time to people on Instagram that send me pictures of Mars lights, kind LED, platinum LED, and these various Epistar using LED lights, these Chinese lights that people are wanting to hack into. Now, most of these drivers that are in these, Mar in these Mars and these other fixtures are either like a 50 volt, an 80 volt, or a 100 volt. Um, and none of them are an amazing fit. Like the 80 volt ones fit Cree really well, but the other ones don't fit Cree very well. They don't use up enough of the driver voltage. So you take a fixture that was 600 watts, you outfit it with cobs. And because you haven't used all the voltage, you get less watts than you had. So Vero is a really nice fit for that. And I think the B version Vero is definitely worth checking out. The C's are the most efficient. Okay, the C's are the most efficient. I was not aware of that, but they're definitely worth uh, looking into. And I've got, um, I've got several of each model, so I can kind of do some of my own testing as well to confirm that. Um, I believe Green Gene was using the B version where he put his integrating sphere test, test data. And, um, and we can take a look at that here in, in just a second. In fact, I'll do that now. 
while I catch up with my chat room people. So chat room, we got through that quick part and um, I kind of dialogued or I kind of monologued there for a while because, you know, I'm going to I intend to leave this on the playback uh, so that people can find it. So I wanted the information to be valuable. Mm. Unless I don't like the sound of my own voice, then I'll delete it like I did the uh, the stream I did the other day. But that was just a chill stream. So Owls and Smoke in the house. What's going on? Grow Anonymous. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Yeah, that sounds way better. Six of one, half dozen of the other. So uh, if you're using Watt's Law um, to, to figure out your watts by multiplying your volts and your amps, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. Thank you, dude. God, where were you? Where were you a few minutes ago? Six string, welcome to the stream, ledbuilder.org. Uh, Canabra, Peter S, bra, Mass Affected, already said to you. And we'll do some double shout outs. Feeling pretty generous today. Do some double shout outs. Take a quick rip. Kind Buffalo, what's up, Legal? How you doing, man? I will. I will mod you. Hustle King, because we've met in person. We sh we've pressed palm, which is a really weird, really weird saying, but some people say it. We've pressed palm. I was going to look up. Um, what was I going to look up? I don't remember now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, gang. Okay, so we're back here on the, uh, the screen share, and I have two microphones. And so what I'd like you to do as I transition over to the table, uh, the workbench, to show you guys what I was going to show you initially, um, I'd like it if you guys could just like scream my name. So if I've if I've seen, um, actually, I will I will I will mod Cutter Electronics. There we go. Okay, that is the last mod I'm doing right now because this is this, we'll do that stuff on the Hangout. So I'm just going to very quickly adjust my uh, webcam so that you guys can see this with a little bit a little bit brighter, and then we'll go over to the uh, we'll go over to the workbench, aka my dining room table with a piece of paper on it. And we'll, uh, we'll show you what I was trying to show you guys earlier, but obviously I'm, I had some stream software issues. So I think that looks pretty good, pretty bright. There we go. So I might sound a little bit differently, but just really quick, did you guys did not hear anything from when I was screwing around with this stuff earlier. I'm just confirming that. I'm going to wait for the delay. I'm assuming you didn't hear it. Of course, my, my, uh, my head wasn't looking at the screen, so I couldn't I couldn't see you guys screaming at me earlier. So just say no. I we did not hear the first stream. I did mod uh cutter and cutter uh Mark, you are welcome to post any uh any links that you would like to uh any of your products or the uh the bridge like E B stuff so people can check that out later. Okay, it was one hundred thank you, Peter. One hundred percent silent. So we're gonna go over here. I'm just gonna take a quick rip and then drink a water and then I'll go over there. Ah, okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. So if I get my, can I keep my headphones on? Check, check, check. Microphone number two, check. Microphone number one, check. Cheaper microphone, check. Cheaper mic, check, check, check. Okay, there we go. Okay, we've got audio. Here we go. Okay, so I may sound a little distant to you guys. I've got my old mic, my cheaper mic here. And I'm assuming you can hear me pretty well because I'm talking right into this mic. And yep, the gain's up. I'm just I'm gonna glance back to the chat. Okay, we got a check. Real Rasher says we got a check. We got a hard check. Okay, so there are gonna be a number of people that are gonna be coming out with more modular systems because the bottleneck right now is in building the frame, right? In the old days, we used to have to tap and drill our heat sinks and all that stuff. All that's done for you now. You buy a heat sink. Most of the heat sinks in the marketplace from Timber from Northern Grail Lights, from Cutter, from Rapid, they're all gonna be tapped. They're all gonna be ready to go for you guys. But the problem is building the frames. And so that's where like Timber Grow Lights, who's done a great job in like giving you DIY type of pricing with a, with a frame pre-built. But a lot of people want still wanna build their own lights, but they just are too intimidated by the metal. So Rapid and I, Cutter, uh, Mark's got a product coming out. I saw on Instagram, I don't know what stage of, of that is in development, but. Uh, Rapid's got this product for you. It's coming out like tomorrow or something. I don't know the pricing. It is more expensive than angled aluminum, but not by a hell of a lot if you factor in the bolts, your time, all the bullshit you got to buy, hacksaw blades, ang you know, angle grinder, whatever. So these rails slapped together. 
there are some end pieces that go on the rails that uh, separate it. And they've got these little T nuts here, which slide in the extrusions and allow your different heat sinks to, uh, to interface with the rail. So these are 140 mil heat sinks. If you had 120 mil, you would just use some washers. Uh, the, the bolts that it comes with are very long. So you would use washers to soak up that 10 mil on each side. And it's uh, sort of forward and backward compatible. So you don't need to buy all new shit. You can use your old shit. You can use this stuff now and you can use new stuff. No, it's not warm and fuzzy, but at least you can hear me. Um, so that goes, so these go in here and you can fit pretty much any of the products uh, that are out in the marketplace today. And there, there is also basically a four foot by four foot frame. So if you're running four by fours, um, this is perfect for you. It'll fill the entire space, 48 inches by 48 inches. And you would just slide your cobs. Um, if you leave yourself a little slack of wire, you slide your cobs to your optimal position inside your four by four. So if you're growing a single plant scrog, you push everything in and you gradually tap these out to increase your spread over time. So that function will be really cool. Also, uh, inside of the whole frame, which I'll do a full video on this, um, these same T-nuts interface with the end caps. So that will, if you use a single screw on that, you'll be able to now angle um, these bars in and out. So there's going to be a lot of cool functionality, a lot of cool flexibility with it. There are universal driver brackets that interface with this thing. So the idea is, and the idea that kind of popped into my mind over a year ago was like, wouldn't it be cool if a person could legitimately do a DIY LED grow light with just a screwdriver and wire strippers? And so uh, that day is coming and that day is um, like tomorrow or maybe the next day. I don't know. I'd have to check rapid site. So this isn't a product by me. This is a product they developed, but it's a product I'm testing and showing you guys how to use. I'm trying to integrate all the products in the marketplace. Um, everybody, you know, anybody that reaches out to me, I'll, I'll try to help get their product integrated in here. Um, and it might not be something that rapid manufactures, but like chilled, for example, since their heat sink is smaller than 140 mil, um, I will give a recommendation on the screws that, uh, either rapid can carry or that you guys can buy in order. And you could fit these chill boards in here as well with the same hardware and all that good stuff. Maybe just some washers um, to make it look cooler. So that'll work. The other cool thing about it is um, you all that have quantum boards already. Let's see. Hold on. I see red. I see red. Oh, they went live yesterday. Okay. Well, maybe they are. Um, I'll pull up their site here in a moment. But um, if you already have quantum boards and you have slate one heat sinks, which are the more uh, the less expensive ones, the ones in the fifteen dollar range. These extrusions fit exactly perfectly in between here. So there you go. That fits. It's actually a press fit. It's fairly snug. You would not have that sliding function with these, but um, you don't have to buy anything else. What you would have to do, though, take a drill bit, drill four holes into your heat sink. There's plenty of room. And then you just run a screw. These uh, have a little extrusion, so you could actually, you don't have to tap or anything. You could actually just probably run a uh, self-tapping screw assuming you drilled there and there. So if you already got quantum board stuff and you want to expand your build, you'll be able to do that with this system. Now we're still working on the slate two, which I imagine a lot of people will have slate two heat sinks, which uh, are something like this. And they kind of fit, they kind of work. So I imagine there's probably a workaround somewhere that we could work out or we could figure out or something like that. But um, I'm still working on the, the slate two. So that is definitely something that, um, well, it's not really my responsibility to make everybody's product fit this thing. I'm not making any money off this crap, but uh, I do want to help people out and try to, you know, help them figure out how to do it in, a, in an easy way. So, um, yeah, we'll work on that later. But for now, back to the Veros. So I happen to have the two style Veros. Magnetic? Yeah, magnetic would be dope. These are the two style Veros. And as you can see, this is the uh, sort of the, the OG Vero. It has solder pads if you'd prefer, or it has a little area for those Pico uh, Easy Pico Easy Mate connectors for your wire. So the cop holder is integrated. You just screw it down there. Now this is the Vero SE, and to my knowledge, it only comes in a 36 volt version. So you know 36 or 38 volts depending on uh, the drive current. But this one's a lot like those Cree cop holders where it's got a wire bite hole, and you can just stick the wire. Actually, you just stick the wire in here and it's kind of a Chinese finger trap. So you stick it in and kind of tug it in and it sits in there. So these are only available in that 36 or 38 volt flavor. Uh, they're about $26, $27, but um, they can be a little bit more convenient. So um, 
those are the two different types. Uh, they fit on most heat sinks. Um, but if you're going to go Vero, you're going to save money over Cree, but you're also potentially going to be running these at a higher drive current so you get more wattage at them, which means you need a bigger heat sink. So now you're starting to look at a minimum of a 140 millimeter heat sink. Um, or you could be looking at the bigger, like 180 mil, 160 mil, or those SSTX uh, square flared ones. So, you know, that is definitely something to mention. It's not all like, you know, savings galore. Like you are increasing the, your heat sink cost, you're increasing your thermal mass and your weight. So it's definitely something to consider. I, I hate making blanket statements, but I personally would not run any Vero on anything less than 140 mil heat sink because once you buy it, you might as well buy the biggest you can, even if you're using a low drive current, right? Because if you wanna expand later or bump up the current, bump up the wattage, you'll already have your investment in that 140 mil heat sink. So that would be my advice there. And then obviously, yeah, there's always the, the active heat sink option, which is a really good one. And I want to talk about ap, uh, active heat sinks actually for a moment here. Um, give me just a brief second to adjust this microphone. Okay, we're back. We are back. We are back. Welcome. Yes, I know. It's a going from like a seventy nine dollar uh, Audio Technica to a a, a much nicer, uh, more robust um, Electro Voice is, is definitely a big, big difference. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just scroll back and chat here for just a moment, and I see a lot of red. So I definitely want to talk about that. I want to talk about active cooling versus passive cooling a little bit, um, especially uh, when we're talking about cooling barrows down at at high drive currents and, and high wattage. So. Um, let me just run back here and just look at all this red and just say what's up. Okay, so everybody's just saying hello, saying hello to each other. That's fantastic. I love that you guys are starting to recognize each other's names and, and basically hanging out with each other on my streams and outside of my streams and on Instagram. I think that's fantastic. That's what a community is. Um, so Grow Anonymous is saying that um, these things went live yesterday. So let's see if he's right. We'll try to pop up a screen share here so everyone can see what I am talking about. So uh, there we go. Um, oh, we got a new site. That's pretty cool. Let's see. Maybe it'll just slide over to the thing we want, and I can just click it. DIY kits, okay. Horticulture kits. That'd probably be where it would be. Ultra premium. Whoa, ultra premium. We'll have to check that out later. Ultra premium. Any, anytime there's an ultra, that's a whole that's a whole nother level. Premium's great, but ultra premium. That shit will make your computer chair wet. Okay, let's see. Maybe it is under there. Retrofit. This is that this is that A plus quality radio while I navigate a website that I should really know about. But see, that's why we're doing this, folks. That's why we're doing this. This is the planning stream. <laughs> so um, okay, there it is. We're calling it canopy substrate. So um that's kind of cool. I like that name. I came up with the, obviously the canopy kind of system was my custom lights. But if you guys remember, if you remember back, I did a video where I was just kind of cruising around the garden and I kind of came up with this idea that that would eventually become this bracket that like a handful of people got cut out, but it was a bitch because the grab cad, like they, they, I don't know, they, I had a 3d file, but they said they pulled down my shit because they weren't 3d files. They were just 2d. I think they don't like the fact that these are for growing weed and they pulled all my shit down then nobody could get my file and I couldn't find it. So long story short, I did a video saying, wow, wouldn't it be cool if you could just start building these grow lights without having to cut a bunch of stuff. And, uh, you know, you could just grab a screwdriver and some wire snippers and do it in your underwear on a Sunday afternoon on the coffee table. And so that, you know, that day kind of didn't come. And, and obviously that day is here today. So he's got some pricing up here and this is the first time I'm seeing the pricing. So there's some, there are some add-ons. So, okay. So the basic system with two extrusions, end caps, screws, and let's see, pin heat sink brackets. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So the way we, the way I advised him to do this is have it stripped down. That way people are not locked into buying parts that they don't need. So this is a bait. This is just 20 bucks for two extrusions and end caps. 
none of those little T things. So if you're going to do a four heat sink build, you're going to need to add that. So that's another 10 bucks just for those little T nut things. This does not include the heat sinks themselves. So uh, obviously you're going to have to do that, add that. A driver bracket. Um, I won't add one here, but you'll probably need like, you know, one of them per, um, per couple rails, depending on what driver you go with. So um, very low introductory point, but obviously things can add up. Obviously, if you want to use a hanging kit, you've got this Y hanging kit with the finger bite um, adjusters, um, which is about 10 bucks on its own. I've used these before. They're pretty good for adjustability. Or you can save the money by just doing uh, using your rope ratchet. So you can make this fully kitted out just like a car. You know, you can get the heated seats, you can get all that bullshit, um, or you can keep it really cheap. Now, if you're doing quantum boards, um, you wouldn't even need these things. You would just probably screw the quantum boards onto there. Um, so there's that. I think 20, let's see, is 20 fair? Let's see, we'll, we'll, we'll do a price check on this stuff to see if this is a good price uh, in a brief moment. I just want to go through the full system. Okay, the canopy substrate, this is your exterior railing. And um, obviously, this is going to make a lot more sense when I do a more produced video. Um, let me just scroll down to see what's going on. Okay, there we go. There we go. It's about 500 for a four by four build on barrows. Yeah, maybe we'll spec out like a, what, what a kit would cost. So here is a full kit. Now this thing's like 47.5 inches by 47.5. So you can cut it for your three by threes. You'll have to cut it for your three by threes. This is a one size fits all four by four. And that was kind of me and his concept was like, look, man, if you're going to light a four by four space today, who knows what you're going to need tomorrow or the next day, do the damn thing four by four. And uh, that way, if you have a thirty-dollar lumen meter or a five hundred-dollar par meter, you've got the you've got the real estate, so you can move these cobs out just a hair. Like we don't know how our plants are going to grow. You know how you have uh, you have your plant all nice and um, pruned up, and you got it all, uh, you know, all, like a candelabra, like a uh, all uh, topped out with multiple tops, and then you flip to flower right, and you get this rogue top that's like a foot taller than everything else. Well. Uh, this system would allow you to push that heat sink out and illuminate that one cola, wherever that cola may be. So 40 bucks gets you the outer perimeter, which are these 47 inch L bracket rails and then two side rails. And then as you can see, um, like I explained before, um, the, the $20 rail that I just showed attaches to a T nut. And so that you have two axes, two axes of adjustability. You can adjust on the X axis and on the Y axis. And if you mount them a certain way, you get a third axis, which is where you can angle it. Um, so like I said, just a preview. We'll get into this in detail with some great photography and videography and, and explanation. So live stream a Google a spreadsheet in Google Sheets to show a build with pricing. I think what we can do, Dow Binks, is maybe just start adding some stuff to a cart and, uh, and go from there. So I think you could easily probably spend $200 on this. So I think if you landed here on the 4x4 canopy substrate for 40 you could add three bars to that and then and then you would add let's just add probably two driver brackets and then we'll add a hanging kit so 195 bucks gets you your frame which i think is fairly fair because if you look at the pricing on the timber stuff they're charging about a three to 350 dollar premium over what the components cost to build a frame and wire it now this saves you a little money over a timber but you have to wire it yourself. So now in 2017, you can buy all your stuff yourself, do the full build, do your metal fab. You could buy this, or you could buy one of the cutter products. And when that comes out, uh, follow those guys on Instagram, and you could um, you could do it that way, or you could go with the timber. Um, but I think what you're going to find is we'll go over to HomeDepot.com, um, and we'll see how much people are um, are spending on uh, on rail stuff. Let's see. Hold on. Jared Barrow done seven notes. Hold on just a second. Let me figure this out. Yeah. Let's see. We'll just double check and see what this uh, angled aluminum is going for. We'll go from there. Okay. Catching up on comment. Too poor for that. Okay. Well, you know. Well, you see, that's the thing. Um, like I said, not my product, so not really my responsibility to justify the price, but I think it makes for some good discussion. So let's let's get into the price. So $195 for like a full setup uh, for all the metal and the extrusions. 
So we'll need to compare that to what it's going to cost in aluminum from Home Depot. Um, let me just search that real quick. And then we'll need to, you know, we'll need to add screws. We'll need to add wire and chain and see like what all that stuff costs. And I imagine it's going to cost about a hundred dollars or so. And I probably, I think what would be a good idea for the video is, uh, going to Home Depot and buying all the shit that you need for a, um, for a build out of just angled aluminum. And then, you know, maybe buying a hacksaw blade, charting how much time it takes to build the frame and then figuring out if you worked out at McDonald's, if you worked at McDonald's for a living. Um, and you made between 10 and $12 an hour, um, then we would add that amount to uh, what the build would cost, right? And uh, obviously, if you make more than that, it may make sense for you to do it that way. It may not. But my suspicion is that um, many people, this is a bottleneck for them to get into it. And regardless, a DIY build of any sort, you know, whether it's a timber, whether it's a from scratch, or whether it's from rapid, is still going to be cheaper than a production grow light. I mean, let's let's keep that in mind. Um, let's see if I can find this crap. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, that's only half inch. That is only half inch. Still looking, searching, <laughs> calculating. Okay. There we go. Okay, folks. Now. This is what people are paying at Home Depot, okay? And all of a sudden, uh, let's see, hold on, pop-ups. Hold on, players. Hold on, hold on, here we go. Okay, let's, let's get back to chat. Okay, a new viewer, he just told me he loves this channel. Oh, that's great, awesome. I just built a pretty intricate frame and you spent 200 on it, Wookie, okay. Um, but but that it probably, you said you bought a Dremel and that was like 40 bucks. So, Grow Anonymous, I spent roughly 200 for just the 80 20 1050 profile for my builds. So, that's a great price, including the screws and the sliders that come with it. Okay, it, it, very, it very well may be, but anytime you talk about the price of anything, people have different price sensitivity points. So, for me, and I think for the video, which will probably be um, later this week, I will, um, I'll break it down. I'll go to the Home Depot myself, I'll spend the money. And I'll build a frame. Maybe I'll just give the frame away so I don't have to like waste the money on building a frame that's not going to get used. But uh, okay, let me just find my hangouts real quick. There it is. There it is, folks. Okay, I'm going back to screen share. Boom. Present to everyone. Okay. So, uh, and I can confirm this price. It's actually two dollars cheaper at Lowe's. Lowe's is charging like sixteen fifty. But a piece of three quarter inch by three quarter inch eighth inch thick, which is the thickness you need to have the rigidity to build a light this big, um, which is actually barely, I would actually probably go one inch by one inch, but they don't sell that at Home Depot. It's costing you $18.54 each. Now with that said, this is an extremely high price for this type of material. If you go to a, a metal store, um, like if you just take the five minutes to Google, you know, your area, metal supplier public that sells to the public you'll be able to save over 50 percent buying this stuff like i i think i'm paying like i think i'm paying like eight dollars and sixty cents for this exact product at my metal store but the the thing about it is nobody's doing that so many people like even my close friends are like like they're texting me and they're sending me instagram things from home depot like is this it is this what i get um Actually, Da Binks, since you're being um, very constructive to the conversation, um, you know, and critical of the price, um, I am going to mention your comment. One sixteenth inch is perfect. Keep it lightweight. I could not disagree more. It, I could not disagree more. One sixteenth is a very bad recommendation. Um, it is so incredibly thin. It might be good for like a two, three, maybe four cob build. But I've done a bunch of builds with 1 16th, man, and that shit flexes. Um, it flexes laterally, and it is just not very rigid. You end up having to add so many braces and things like that that you add a significant amount of weight back to it. Now, your experience may vary, but I would go with 1 8 inch thick for sure, 100%. Anyone who's done a build will tell you that. So back to the price. If we chop this thing down, we're getting two sticks. Uh, if we chop this thing in half, we'll have two 48-inch pieces. And to do a decent nine cob build, we're going to need eight of those. So eight, eight half pieces is four of these. So we have to bump this up by four. Um, and we'll just go ahead and add that to the cart. 
So, I mean, that's like 80 bucks. So 75 bucks. So you're, you're, you're paying 75 bucks in the three quarter if you're going to Home Depot. Now you're going to need a hacksaw or an angle grinder or a Dremel. Okay. So if you have that stuff, that's great. Congratulations. If you don't, you're going to have to buy that shit and you're going to have to cut it. Now a hacksaw is only six bucks, but you're going to spend about 45 minutes to an hour cutting this stuff. So how much is your time worth? So um, in short, I don't want to go all through this because I'm actually kind of boring myself, but um, I think 200 is pretty spot on. I'm very comfortable with that price. I think my the value of my time, I value my time at about $85 an hour. Um, that That's just what I feel like my time is worth. And so if I spent three hours fucking around with a angle iron build, then you know it's 250 bucks of my time gone. So we're saying goodbye to Grandmaster Level. It's been fun. This is like me listening to people speaking a different language I don't understand. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so we'll talk to you later, GML. We'll see you on the next one, buddy. Thanks for stopping by and listening to me talk Chinese. Mm. Okay, so um, I didn't necessarily want this to be like a commercial. It was more supposed to be about Veros um, and their drive currents. So what I'm going to do is get back to the Vero talk. Um, unless you guys want to go put a cart together. I will, the chat can vote. Um, it, it, you just let me know what you want. But, but for now, we're gonna go over to Meanwell. And we're gonna kind of figure out what drivers are gonna work um, work well with these Veros, which is something I need to do for the video anyway. So uh, this is what I would be normally doing alone, but I've got all you wonderful people to keep me company. So I think that's great. Uh, let's see, I have to head out to Chrissy. Okay, see, I must have bored people. The home, well, the Home Depot talk, it's, it's boring GML, it's boring Chrissy, she's heading out. Um, can, uh, who is this? Cannibalize. Why not order it from Metals uh, for you online and get four feet pieces for 40 bucks ship? I would absolutely recommend that. Um, it's just that the nature is that people are like showing me on Instagram. They're tagging me with these Home Depot receipts and they're just getting like ripped, bro. So, uh, okay, we're going back to the Vero. Yeah, let's go back to the Vero. Um, we'll talk about the drivers and the Veros because I think a lot of people already... Um, you know, already have this kind of, mm -hmm. they already have an idea in their head how they're going to build it. So let's go up to Meanwell's website and we'll look up the HLG drivers. We'll probably stick within that driver talk. The chat has spoken. They want to talk about Veros and drivers. They changed the website a little bit. So we'll just have to do a little searchy search here, HLG. And there's two HLGs. So let's just give a general driver overview here. Um, when we're talking about Meanwell drivers, and we're talking about HLGs, there's two versions, and I've seen people use both versions for these Veros. So there's what's called the C or constant current, and then there's the, what's called the, like the constant voltage constant current. And what you'll notice is that the C means constant current. You can be very successful with a non-C version driver if you're comfortable with that. And in fact, many of them are, are more flexible for some applications, but um, I just don't wanna confuse people, so I'm gonna stick with the Cs. So. Let's first figure out how much light we're going to need. Actually, you know what? Let's vote. Let's vote. What kind of space should I spec out here live? What kind of space should I spec out here live? I've got my little notepad. So we'll be popping that notepad up and down. We'll just start adding stuff. Um, four by four, two by two, three by three. Um, let's keep it like lowest common denominator. Four by four, four by four, four by four, four by four, four by four. Okay, let's stick with the four by four. Okay, we got the four by four, four by four in the house. I'm gonna very quickly toggle back and see there's 337 people in here. It's more than I had anticipated. So now I'm feeling really nervous. Okay, no, that's okay. I don't get nervous. We're good. We're good peeps. Okay, so we're coming on a four by four. So the first thing we need to do, we need to make some notes. So 16 square feet square meters which happened to be like 1.48 or something like that but we're just going to go ahead and just do this slow for everybody that's that's watching this back so 1.4865 is the area of a 4x4 tray and we need that in meters because we're going to calculate first how much light we want and then we'll select the components based on um, how much light we want instead of selecting the components and saying um, it's going to be so um meters okay how much light do we want gang how much light do we want 
um, do we want to run CO2? Do we want to push the maximum amount of light in a four by four space um, before we need CO2 uh, for a four foot, that's four foot space. And um, let's see. Got to catch up. Just call this, uh, well, we're going to also call this, we'll call this 100 and for uh, all of our, we, we definitely want to have our, uh, our international people um, with us of centimeters by 120 centimeters. All right. Yeah, they're roughly right. It's 122, but we just call it 120 cm by 120 cm. So uh, no CO2. I'm seeing a lot of people saying no CO2 because uh, that's me, that's you, that's everybody. You're not everybody, but okay. So we're saying no CO2. Okay. That's good. Okay. And we're saying no CO2. Good. Okay. So we've got a little screen share going on here. Let me just see how the screen looks. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, just give me a brief minute. I'm going to show you guys the, I'm going to take a brief minute. I'm going to show you guys the integrating sphere data that was released by specific light concepts last week, which is kind of what really sparked this whole thing for me. Um, so let me just drag that into frame for you guys. Enhance. <laughs> Enhance. Enhance. Okay, we've reached maximum enhancement. Okay, I think you guys can probably see that pretty well. And what this is stating is that uh, Light Laboratory Inc. over in Anaheim, California, on this date with this guy and this email address has clocked the Vera 29s at 1.91 micromoles per watt or PPF per watt or micromoles per joule. It's all the same thing. Um, six half dozen one of the other. Six, six, fuck, I can never remember it. Um, so 1.91 micromoles per joule and the drive current, which I believe is, we'll have to find that drive current if it's, if it's stated here. Um, I believe it was 1400 milliamps. I believe it was 1400 milliamps. We can, let's see, hold on. Might not have been, might not have been. We might have to calculate, might have to calculate the drive current, figure out what this is. Cause it was a little bit cryptic. Just a second. Unless somebody knows. We'll, uh. Look up the full report. Make sure we're getting out the accurate information to the peoples. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. See, this is good stuff. See, this would have, I would have had to look this up for the video. And uh, actually, Green Gene texted me that stuff. And here's the whole chart. Okay. Nope, didn't say. Um, five amp, 599 watt. Okay, so let's just do it like this. Let's go. Um, we'll take the 591 watts, which is total system, multiply that by 0.94, assuming we're getting 94% driver efficiency, we'll remove the wattage that is um, uh, dissipated by the driver. So 555 is what is the wattage that we're getting out of all six cobs that were tested in this fixture. So we'll divide that 555 by six cobs because it's called the PLC six. So we know there's six of them. So at 92 watts, um, you're getting that drive current. So this is actually higher than 1400 milliamps. This is something like, um, let's see if we divide by, um, well, let's see, let's see what it is. Maybe it is, figure out what version is it. So we'll divide that by 1.4. Okay, so that's pretty consistent with this, the spec sheet. If you remember the spec sheet, there was a um, there was a version that was a 69 volt. So I'll go back to that spec sheet and uh, we'll figure this out. So we're gonna have to make some assumptions, which is good because I, don't, I wanna make assumptions here when we're practice, like this is our practice. Uh, we'll make the assumptions now and then we can confirm that stuff with Green Gene later. Um, and we'll, we'll come up with some, we'll come up with some different options and then I'll confirm what they are. So Vera 29, We've got the what's called the B version. You can say or the S E version, which is uh, like a thirty six to thirty eight. Is that right? Or well, there's, let's figure this out. We'll just go back to Bridge Lux. Okay, that Notepad could be a spreadsheet. Yeah, it could be. You should uh, fire up a stream and make a spreadsheet if that's the way you want to do it. Um, spreadsheets are very hard to, to stream. And so this one, uh, I, I, I practiced and, um, this one has a big enough font that people can actually read. So, uh, do appreciate the, uh, 
the suggestions for making the stream a little better, but I'm going to deny you. Okay. Let me get back down here, folks. Okay, here we go. Here's where we have all of our drive currents and all our good stuff. So uh, B version is the 52 volt at 1800 milliamps. Um, so we'll go ahead and jot that down. B version is 52 volts at well, 1.8 amp. At, uh, 29 C version. Okay, what's the C version? C version is 69.4 at 1710. 69.4 volts at what? 1710? Barrow 29. C version. I believe is the D the same as, yes, the D and the SE are the same. D, I'll put a slash slash SE, which I think we we'll just call this the 36 volt, uh, 38 volt version. And that voltage is at, see, you see how, you see how boring all this shit is when you're trying to like figure it out in your head? That's why I, I try to figure it out all first and then, you know, we'll condense this, make it slightly more interesting. I'm going to go 2100 milliamps for that. Okay, so um, let's see here. So let's do the math. Let's do the math, folks. Let's do the wattage math. So uh, we take 52 volts and we'll multiply that by 1.8 amps. That's going to be 93 watts on that one. That's 93.6 watts. Do the same thing for the C version. We'll go uh, Gronanimous. What's that saying again? Six half dozen of the other. Half six, fuck, <laughs> fuck. What is it? <laughs> Help me. Times now we're not multiplying by seventeen ten. We're because that's milliamps. We're multiplying by only the amps, which is one point seven one zero amps. That'll give us uh, one hundred eighteen. Yeah, one hundred eighteen point uh, seven watts. I decided to leave stuff for tomorrow. At least my mopping got done, Chrissy says. I felt bad that I made Gromouse think he bored me. Oh, that's so sweet. Notes in Python. Notes in Python. No, I don't know any um, programming languages. I, I wish I did. Um, I wish I did. Keep it real. Keep it real. That notepad could be, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know what? That's, that's actually a really good idea. Sorry, my tone might have sounded a little snarky when I denied you. But uh, I think a spreadsheet would be a really good thing. Now, let me ask you guys advice. What do you think would be a good um, file sharing program? Because I just don't want to have Dropbox on my computer and, you know, interfacing between the web, you know, for someone in my position that's kind of exposed out there on the Internet with, uh, with a pretty large footprint. So uh, do you guys have a program that you can recommend where, like, let's say I put this spreadsheet that the Binks is talking about making where people can just go and download it for free because I would like to be able to provide some more um, offline resources for people to have Google Docs. Um, and then what would I do uh, if L? I would just um, basically make that a an open Google Doc and then anyone could click the link, Google Drive for Sheets and Docs. Okay, yeah, that's a good suggestion. We will look into that for sure. Okay, so uh, we figured out, we figured out um do we figure anything out i don't know what did we figure out what did we figure out we were trying to figure out we were trying to figure out um i didn't want people to blast me if um if we are quoting uh, uh 1.91 uh, all micromoles per joule which is like the efficiency efficacy which is a ratio which is a rate Right, which is kind of it's like kind of synonymous with saying efficiency, 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 the ratio. See the rate. That per that is a rate. Efficiency the ratio, but we we'll just some people don't like this term; they confuse it. So, if we're quoting one point nine one, we need to know what version. Right. Uh, we're gonna be. C, D, 
you know what drive current. So that's stuff we'll need to know for the video. After a Cobb build, can you do QB calculations? Um, I mean, shit, man. As long as people want to chill and hang out. I mean, golly, there's 377 people watching me use Notepad and Calculator right now. So um, we'll just keep it going until, I, I don't know, until someone... Until someone says, hey, Grow Mouse, there's Dago streaming or Subcool is trying to stream or somebody's trying to stream, and then I'll, I'll hop off and we'll just do a social stream. But I'll keep it going. So um, so here is what we will need to know for the video. If we're going to be quoting 1.91 based on that sphere data, which I have no reason to believe is, is inaccurate or incorrect, we're, oh, okay, did he say it was B? Okay, so let's assume it B. Okay, for the, for the purposes of this stream, um, let's, let's, um let's assume b assume b version okay and then um let's just go with let's just go with a 52 volt as as our voltage we're quoting for our calculations um or if we wanted if we did want to take it a little bit further what we could do is we could go back to this chart we look up our b version which this is all of our all of our data for the b and then this column here is all of our voltage at the at 25c at 25 centigrade um and we got our lumens per watt 163 lumens per watt and obviously the lumens per watt drops as you push them higher watt so um if we're at 12 if we're at 900 milliamps we're 49.6 we're at right 12 or at 50 uh 52 um so let's let's do let's do this let's figure it out at 2100 milliamps um Mm, well, let's, let's look them all up. Let's look them all up. Okay. HLG 600-54 uh, test report shows it can do. Oh, oh, be brilliant. Brilliant. So let's explore that. Let's explore that. LED Gardener is saying the test report shows this driver. Maybe I am just up here on the stage, so I'm trying to like keep the flow moving, and I'm not actually looking at uh, and reading something. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. Okay, so we know it's got six. It, oh, oh my God. It says the driver right freaking care, LED gardener. In actually in bold letters. See, that's why you don't use bold, guys, because you know the, sometimes the bigger writing doesn't stick, it doesn't stick out at you. Okay, so it's 54. So then we know, then we know indeed. Confirmed, right? Confirmed. Do some all caps. Confirmed. B version. So there we go. There we go. Confirmed. So now we know it's the B version. Okay. Now let's take a look. Let's take a look at. Keep closing windows. Keep closing windows. Okay, let's see what's going on. Thank you very much, LED Gardener, for that clarification. Um, but actually, you know, I think there was, um, I think there was some value to that whole exercise because it it forced us to like do some calculations and and verify the math. So we thank you, Real Rasher. Your math is verified now. I enjoy seeing your show and and show your work. So yeah, like teacher ain't gonna give you credit if you don't show the work. You know what I'm saying? So uh, are we? Why are we? Why are we going there? We're, we're back at Meanwell, folks. We're back at Meanwell. Meanwell.com, Taiwanese company. Uh, distributed out of the Bay Area, San Francisco, California. Some of the drivers are made in Taiwan. A lot of them are made in China. But um, I don't really uh, have any negative connotation there because these drivers, while made in China, are the best in class. Arguably the best in class. So we're, we're looking for 600 watts. But I, I kind of got... A little bit too far into the components we need to back up i said we were going to back up and we need to figure out how much light we want okay so um let me show you this little spreadsheet here or this little infographic um, lighting spreadsheets open this up on my computer open this up on my computer where is it where is it uh so many spreadsheets so many spreadsheets okay now, I showed this on the live stream with Vitaly, and there were some people that were critical uh, of this spreadsheet, um, saying that this spreadsheet was from 
some random LED website. That random LED's website used this graph. I don't remember where this where this graph's original source was, but it was from a higher plant study by either like UC Davis or Purdue. It was a major university study of higher plants. Okay, and the the premise was as you go as you increase your PPFD or your total photon density over a space, the photosynthetic rate rises incrementally. So when you go from 100 PPF, which is really low, that'd be like a T5 or something like that, or um, actually it'd, it'd be like two T5s um, over a four by four would be like 100 PPFD, right? Four, four, four T5 high outputs would be like this. So as you bump up that light, your PPF takes a massive jump. Your, your photosynthetic rate also takes a massive jump, like 30% more photosynthesis, then it's 25%, then it's 20%, then it's 15, then it's 12.5, then it's 10, then it's 8% increase. So you're spending this money, you're bumping up light levels, but your total performance or your total um, photosynthetic rate is not linearly increasing. So the point being, it's called diminishing returns, which means that you're spending a bunch of money, you're adding all this much more light, but the plant isn't necessarily like going gangbusters proportionally. So the idea is that when you reach between 1,000 and 1,150 PPFD, you need to start adding CO2 to, to see that bigger jump. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. You're, you're spending all this money for uh, not that big of a gain. So that's where that came from, and that's where we're setting the baseline. Um, so we said no CO2, which means we want between... 1,000 to 1,150 PPFD. Now, PPFD is a shorthand. It's not a unit. So PPFD refers to photosynthetic photon flux density. It's how many photons are in a space, the density of that. And the units for that are um, micromoles per second per meters squared. I don't know how to do the subscripts and stuff uh, without looking it up. So Micromoles per second per meter squared. So that's the units. But we're just going to say we're just going to say PPFD because we don't. I mean, we just don't want to like confuse people. I mean, we already lost Grandmaster level. He said he was confused, and he said we we're speaking another language. So, I mean, we are. He's speaking Canadian. We're speaking English. But uh, <laughs> love you, GML. Um, okay, so that's what we want. So we we have a target goal now. What kind of shit are we going to need to buy to get into this target range? We have our space. Um, we know that our space is one point, uh, what is it, 1.4, let's go with 1.49 meters squared is how big the space is. So for everybody that's just joining us, um, we got about 358 people that are in here. We're going through Vero 29 research so that I can provide people with the right information. I've already screwed up like three times. So um, that's good that we caught that. We got all our friends in chat. Bob Weedla, Woody Woody's in the house now. Elucidex, Shadonk, Covinus. Um, we will get into your question. He's asking, what's the best PPFD money value right now? And that's what we're talking about, my friend. And we're going to get to the fucking point in just a minute. So hang in there. Zooey and Slammer. Chris is still in the house. Norwegian Frog's been here all day. Oh, my God. Grandmaster Level's still here. He's Grandmaster Level's breastfeeding for some reason. Green Gene is now in the house as we kind of pick into his data. So um, look what I put on the map. All aboard. Yeah. No, for real, Gene, Gene's been a big time trendsetter in the game, in the LED game. I mean, he's the first guy that I that I saw and realized you could even do this kind of shit. And Gene, if if you would like to join me, I would be more than happy to have you. Um, just tag me so the name is red and I'll figure out how to get you the link somewhere or somehow. Um, so basically, we're running through with these Pharaohs and figuring out how we can get 1,000 to 1,100 PPFD. Um, and we're about to get into that. So... Um, that's what we want. That's what we're trying to get. And we've got some um, we've got some different types of Varos over here. We're breaking down the voltages, trying to figure out what's the best. Could you must confirm acknowledgement of California listeners? Oh, of Canadian listeners using the customary A. Um, I, yeah, okay. A is a little played. I, I I like to say sorry, sorry, like Grandmaster level sorry. You got to add a couple extra O's in there. Sorry, okay. That's what we want. So the formula for that is basically we take our efficacy, okay, which is down here. We confirmed 1.91 is our e efficacy micromoles per joule. And we need to multiply that 
we'll go for, we'll just use a big X there. We need to multiply that by our input wattage. What we're going to do here is we're going to just use, we're going to use total system here because that is what, what is reported. Okay. And typically if you're running on 224 volts, 94% of the watts come from uh, the LEDs. LEDs, this is sort of a best case scenario, and about approximately 6% at 220 to 240 volts AC in goes to driver heat, not photons. Okay, so that's kind of how this thing works out. So we take our, um, we take our efficacy times our input wattage. And that gives us total PPF at the source, at source. Okay. So like that would be like at your HPS bulb or at your cob or whatever. Now we have to uh, for get the PPFD, we need to uh, divide by area in meters. Let's just use the new PLC or Pacific Light Concept 6 that's coming out. It is, what was it? 500 and something? 590 watts? Is that right? Damn it, I lost it. Where is it? There it is. Let's look at the PLC. This is all public info. Green, am I, Gene, am I being a douche for like digging into your, your insides and putting you on display here? I figure somebody's going to do it. It might as well be me. That way, if I make an error or something like that, you can correct me and I'll actually make the correction. But um, basically, we're kind of digging into this new light that PacificLightConcepts.com is coming out. It's going to be 799 bucks, and it's going to be just under 600 watts. So uh, what do you say? System wattage is 598 at the higher. Oh, I see. Okay. So there, that's important. That's important to note. At 120, standard American wall voltage, you're actually pulling more watts, the 598, then you are at a higher voltage like 277. And the reason is the drivers consume more energy to make the LEDs turn on at a lower voltage. Um, so, so basically it's, it's, it, it, on paper, it's like, oh, well, I'm getting 598. Well, really you're consuming 598 and that difference is uh, ending up as driver heat. So if we take 598 and we subtract 578.1, you're basically blowing 19.9, let's call it 20 watts in additional driver heat by running it at 120 versus 277. Gene ain't scared. He ain't scared. He says, go into my innards and explore the inner cavities of my company. Put me on blast. All right, Gene's on blast. Gene's on blast. Uh, unfortunately, our ADD has fully kicked in and I forgot the wattage again, even though I just typed it and it's in chat. That's just some things that happen sometimes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find that again. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Here we go. We got it. We got it. We're back. We're back. So let's just let's just figure out what Gene's stuff is putting out. Let's assume we're running the um, the 578.1 watts at the 1.91 um, moles per joule. So we're talking about this formula here. Um, input wattage times efficacy is equal. We'll get our total. Let's get our total PPF. Figure out our light level. Our total light level escaping the light fixture. Um, Five seventy-eight point one times one point nine one. Um, so we got eleven oh four point one seven, and that is. Micro moles of photons emitted, right? Because a watt is a joule per second. And if we multiply these two numbers, this joule and this joule cancel, leaving us with micromoles per second. There we go. See, if you check your units, you won't fuck up. Uh, but I don't think it did. 
Uh, now to get our to get our PPFD. So that was pretty easy. I think most people, um, I think all 356 people that are in here uh, trying to figure this crap out. When you calculate the U moles, are you are you using PPF or PPFD? Domenis, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna kind of go through this one more time. And Spaceball is asking, why is that 110 closer to 50 than 220 is on 50? Sorry, bro. Spaceballs, I'd love to answer your question, but um, I need units, or I, I just don't know what you're talking about. I have an idea, but I don't. Um, okay. Green Gene is saying that it actually puts out more like 1126 in the sphere. Wattage will fluctuate based on system efficiencies, um, and but the PPF stays constant, and, and, and that'll just be based on um, you know, people have a very, a slightly varying AC wattage, but um, let's go with, um, let's go with his numbers from his spear so that we, uh, we got that. But um, so when you're trying to calculate how much light do I want for my four by four space without CO2, the first thing you do, if you're looking at a fixture or you're looking to build a fixture, you take the wattage that it is when you plug it into the wall. Like if you plug it to a kilowatt or a meter, it uses 578 from the wall. You take the known efficiency or efficacy of the fixture. A lot of people are not publishing this information. The best companies do. So if you see this published on a website, uh, you know that company is confident in the performance of their light and their product. Um, so you want to look for that. And when you're shopping for any grow light product, you want to look at the efficacy. Why would you buy an engine that you don't know the horsepower and the torque? Um, I don't fucking know, but like there's people buying uh, grow lights based off a hope and a prayer and they don't even know what they're buying. But anyway, that's another, that's another thing. So we take our wattage that it is from the wall multiplied by our efficiency. This is another way of saying how much of the energy of this 571 is becoming light. And then obviously the rest is becoming heat. That gives us the total light that's emitted from the lamp or the LED or whatever. So if you're holding this thing out in the middle of a vacant field standing on top of a mountain, you're on top of the Rocky Mountains, you plug this thing in, it is just blasting 1126 micromoles out into infinity, assuming the universe is infinite, um, which is another, <laughs> another topic. So that just gives you this sort of infinite amount of photons. If they don't have a, a landing spot, like a plant or a hydro tray, 1126 micromoles of these things are just blasting everywhere. Now, to figure out how dense they are in a space, you have to divide by the area. So to get PV, to get the density, which is what the PPF density stands for, right? We now have to divide. Oh, we now have to uh, divide. We now have to learn how to spell divide. And we have to divide by our area in meters squared, which in this instance is 1.49, because that's just the conversion uh, of a four by four space. Some of you guys are probably ahead of me at your computer doing your math, but uh, we'll take these sphere numbers of one, one, two, six point one seven total photons emitted. We'll divide that by the 1.49. So 755.8. 755.8, and that is micromoles per second. That's that rate over this space. Okay. So there we go. There, there is where we are. Now, that is what this is what a WWW Pacific Light Concepts. PLC6. Stop doing that voice now. This is what a PLC6 from Pacific Light Concepts, when that comes out very shortly, will do for $799 US dollars. And I, again, I did not intend for this to be another commercial's, another company's commercial, but at the end of the day, to talk about this shit and explore this shit, you got to talk about companies that sell stuff because we're consumers of products. So that is just where we need to go. I don't think Grow Mouse is watching the chat to see if Green Gene wants in. Yeah, does he want in? Does he want in? Let's get him in. Let's get him in. 
Gromash, you should send Green Jeans the link so he can help guide you in this stuff. Guide me. <laughs> guide me. I don't want to block your cock. I want to guide your cock. All right, hold on. That, that sounded really weird. Let me get back to my email. I didn't know if he expressed that he did want to get in, but I will give him the option here in just a second. So to do that, what we've got to do, folks, is we've got to uh, stop presenting for a brief moment. And we'll uh, get that email in just a second. That plus sign. Control C. It'll be a lot more interesting with a second voice. Assuming, now Gene, if you're listening and you want to, uh, you want to come in, even if it's just for like 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever you want. Um, feel free. Don't feel obligated, but we'd love to have you. And the link is now sent to your email. And uh, feel free to stop by. Make sure my mask's right. Make sure my mass is right, people. All right, all right, we're back on track, gang. We are back on track, full steam ahead. Share, present to everyone, boom, okay. Gromouse, not my math guy? Okay, did I make an error? Let's be open to the possibility that I need an error. We need ya. Mouse is breaking down. How did I break down? Most drivers, PLC all the way, I just don't know if, uh, no, it's 1.91 micromoles per watt at 120, 1 1.97 at 27. It all equals the same. Oh, okay. I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware that uh, all I'm operating off of is this Instagram post and that information. So um, I think we are in the ballpark though. So we've sent Green Gene the link. If we were off in some way, we can definitely get that corrected. And then again, if I'm completely fucking wrong, then we'll get that corrected before the main video. Like the uh, show title says, this is preparation for the main produced video where this is all like nice and succinct and all that good stuff. Green Jeans Garden, my math guy. Uh, I don't, okay, here we go. We got Tech Talk. Chrissy, Chrome must you kill me. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. How do you factor distance from the light to the surface into this calculation? Well, that's also very important, right? Because um, light diminishes uh, according to the inverse square law, which is probably going to be something that is um, outside of the scope of this video. I want to know at what temps do you start losing micromoles? Well, at what temp you start losing micromoles, the hotter you go regardless. I mean, if you most of these things, uh, most of these LEDs on their spec sheet, they give you a 25 centigrade rating, and then they give you all the way up to an 85. They usually give you those two categories. And as you go from 25 centigrade to 85 centigrade, you lose photons along the way. Um, how many you lose is you know, up for debate. You'd have to measure that at, at these different temperatures. So Green Gene's with us now. So Green Gene, come on in. And um, you know what? Let me just shut up and you tell everybody what I did wrong, if I did anything wrong. You didn't, am I on? Okay, yeah, you didn't do anything wrong, man. You're doing just fine. It, it gets confusing because I do have a couple numbers out there because obviously 1.97 sounds a little better than 1.91. Um, but that's mostly for the commercial growers. You know, anyone on 240, 277, they're going to see higher efficacy. But in the end, it's all the same output. It's all, you know, 11, 26. Um, we got a couple, you know, I had it on a Ganyo. I had it in a Sphere. So the Ganyo gave a little higher readings in the Sphere. But so we just post them. So we, like you say, you're in the ballpark. You're working with what you got. I don't think you're off. You're doing You're doing just fine. Okay. Well, these, these, uh, these guys in chat, grow mouses, potentially fucked up numbers so let's save this the only file. one you had on there was because i said the 578 on the 277 because you were talking about some higher voltages so i threw that in there just so you could see the efficiency difference of the driver so we're getting the same amount of light but the driver essentially is pulling 20 more watts on 120 to do so so that that's what's causing your system efficiency but your cobs or your leds whatever we want to call them they're still putting out the same amount of light per watt and you know as long as temperature and all that's consistent it's uh it's all good man Okay, well, let's, let's rework the numbers. Let's rework the numbers. You talk, I type. Uh, okay, um, for sure. Well, I should probably pull up the numbers. So yeah, we have, I mean, it really comes down to the only number that really matters is the fact that you are getting 1,126 micromoles, 27, you know, whatever, right in there. And let's, plus, let's keep it clean. We'll round everything off to the nearest. Okay, 1,125, we'll call it. Well, okay, let's call it 1,125. We, we'll and that's the safe side, yeah. Micromoles of photons coming out. 
exactly. out of all six cobs. Okay. So that's exactly. And to do, so, to do so, it's going to cost us 591 watts, we'll say. That's the sphere test data. Okay. On, and that's 120 20, uh, 20 volts, so you can save 20 watts if you go higher. But for this, we, we just want to keep it consistent with, 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 uh, with what is posted out there. 591 watts? 91 watts, even. Watts. And we'll say when plugged. And that's and someone asked about temperature out there. So that is at working temperature. That was stabilized for 45 minutes, and then the test takes an hour. So it's essentially on for two hours. Um, most of the tests I've had, it's at like 39 to 42 minutes. It's fully stabilized, so it took them 45 to get it. And to do so, they take measurements that are like within, I think it's a half a percent or something like that, or maybe a third of a percent um, wattage differences there. So it, it's really accurate. And it's it's your actual working temps. It's not just straight off the shelf um, or anything like that. Okay, gotcha. So these numbers we're reporting are working, operating kind of stuff. You know, just flash it and get the best numbers. Yes, exactly. So when you're as hot as it's going to be in a grower environment. So the most ragingest thing, you snap that picture, and then that's it. Might not be <laughs> like that all the time, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, yeah. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we, we got a, a 11 and a quarter micromoles coming out of all six cobs. We're, we're our cost 599 watts from a 120 volt standard United States wall plug mm -hmm. AC in. Okay, cool. What's next? Um, so we're just trying to get this into a, I mean, you did well. After that, you, you have the number right. It's, it's 1126 micromoles and we divide it by one, I use 1.48, you can call it 1.49, you know, what's the difference there? Um, and it's going to give you that, that PPFD or that average distribution of photons within that area or the density of them as we like to call them. And it's right there, 755. And that's, that is the target. That's what, um, single ended thousand waters are essentially throwing out over that area. And it's, it's a really good benchmark, um, for great success. And if we correlate it to some more white paper studies, you go back to recommended PPFD, uh, ranges and it was always 500 to 700 to 800 possibly was always some of the original higher light intensity crops such as tomatoes and things like that and since then we've obviously gone um, upwards into the thousand micromole range and, and we do see a little bit of a you know a return on that um, but it does diminish as light levels go on but anyway that's 700 micromoles or 30 dli 30 moles dli is a very common um, kind of threshold benchmark for for agricultural high high light intensity crops okay i have an idea um let's um let's take a look at hold on real quick i want to do something that damn it <laughs> sorry bro. okay so what i'd like to do is um I want to compare this this new product that's going to be hitting the streets very soon, and I want to Next compare week. that to a light that I built that costs me seventeen hundred dollars, and I want to see if I'm getting more light or if you're getting more light at one thousand dollars less. And this mm. is more for me uh, if I can find the files, um, which I may or may not be able to do. So I probably should have found them for. Um, here we go. Good. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. I just got okay. chat on pop out, so I apologize, chat. That's, That's okay. Okay, here are the numbers that I'm getting from Canopy Ten, and um, if you guys, uh, if you guys don't remember, this is Canopy Ten. Um, it's a light that I built uh, a little while back, and it utilizes ten Cree CXB thirty five ninety. The outer ones, the outer ones are thirty five hundred K. The inner ones are four thousand K. And I have some fairly low-end reds and low-end UVs by today, 2017 standards. You know, we're talking like 320 um, milliwatts of output. Now they're like 450. So a uh, little low. I'm losing a little efficiency off of those monos. But the the end goal, you know, or the end result of the whole thing is this fixture. I've done several. I've done probably five harvests with this before we go into the numbers. So. Let's look at it as compared to the um, 1700 plus dollar Canopy 10 using 650 watts of pre CXB 3590. And um, what current are you driving those babies at? 
this on is the 10 at uh, 1400 milliamps which is like the standard totally okay so i built this light everybody saw me build this light they they can go click all the links i spent 1700 dollars on how much is your product 799 799 799 united states all hairs okay so mine was a thousand more and it's using some tech that's still very current but now what we're talking about here is cd bin which was like 2016 top bin right what's the new what is the the new top D bin the new db douchebag delta bravo <laughs> That's how I remember it, dude. <laughs> now I can actually remember it. I can actually remember it. it yeah, you'll never forget it after that. <laughs> in 2017, Delta Bravo. Now that's going to be the douchebag bin. Douchebag bin uh, of 3590. Six piece. Okay. So there we go. So let's look at my little sheet here and see here. So here's my par numbers. Now, um, I will have par numbers for you. We can compare. I'll give. I'll get you them later in the week. I'm actually just setting up uh, open space down at the factory, and I also just got a little four by four ten. I want to see how different the numbers are when you throw it in reflective area. Okay. So well, I'll get you. I'll get you some numbers so you can compare them directly to this later for yourself. Okay. Well, let's. Well, let's go. Let's go here then. Let's just say you bought. If. A Joe, blow LED, user buys two times plc you're calling it the plc six yeah right? that's going to be 16. super creative right yep. no i keep it simple sixteen hundred dollars okay and spends one hundred dollars on some dank he's got a canopy 10 would it be safe to say that uh two plc sixes would beat this yeah, I mean, you, it, it's not like a fair fight. It's like bringing two guns to a knife fighter. So maybe not quite that. But, you know, it's like you can cover a lot more area with that. You got a lot more overall wattage despite if, you know, honestly, the efficacy of the two systems is probably super even because um, you're at 50 watts. So you're getting, you know, at the, syst at the chip level, you should be fully heated up right there at like just over two. But keep in mind, so, I'm using 111 millimeter heat sinks. So I am oh, thermally, yeah, you're not thermally running a little hotter. So let's, in a okay. brief moment, what I want to do is I want to turn you loose, giving people a baseline on um, LEDs, chip on board LEDs, and thermal management, and how temperature plays into this whole equation. And I'm going to go use the restroom, but just a number one. So it won't be very long. So um, before we go into temperature, um, I want to check back in the chat, make sure everything's hunky dory. I don't mm -hmm. see a lot of red. Uh, Christy says, if you want to post, uh, guys, make sure you put grow mouse highlights. Yep. That's the only way I can see it is red. Uh, why do you not minus the Watts loss from led heat? We are going to talk about led heat and then we'll give you a couple kiss kisses right back. I fell three, um, <laughs> Aroma talking canopy 10 Jedi mind trick. Just started leaving comments on my channel, uh, or either that or switch his new avatar. And now I think it's a new person brother upload more of your live streams. Don't get all rain man about it. I'm on the other side of the planet, not often awake for your groovy stream. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm guilty of it too. What do you think he means by don't get all rain man about? I don't know. I was I was like, man, that reference goes right over my head. I wonder what Rain Man's doing. Well, I know what Rain Man is. And Rain Man is like, you know, going super like into the numbers and like doing it and the numbers. So if I'm going Rain Man, that well, shit, that's possible. Upload more <laughs> live streams. Don't get all rain man about it. I'm on the other side of the planet. Not often awake for your groovy streams. But he's maybe that you just get too nerdy about it and you get a little self conscious that that's not going to go over well once posted. Oh, maybe that. Right. Maybe that. That's yeah. That's what he's doing. I think. Um. I, yeah. I think that's probably what he means. And, it, and it's very funny. Okay. Everyone's chilling. We're going to just briefly discuss these numbers. So Canopy Ten was built to spread the cobs out. It's like a 40 inch or like 40 inch by 40 inch fixture. Some so they're real spread out, spread that density out. And then you directed me towards the uh, what, what were those diffusers you just gave them to me? I didn't have to buy them, so I don't know what they are. RZs? Oh, uh oh, we lost audio in your.
I don't hear you and you are currently unmuted, but we're not getting audio still. Muted. Okay, you are muted. I, I, now you're unmuted and we still have no audio, unfortunately. Yeah, shit. Um, go into Google, go into Google Hangouts and click your little uh, settings gear and reselect your input, Gene, because I do not hear you right now. Nope, got nothing. Unless the chat hears you and I don't, but I don't. Um, just, just disconnect and reconnect. Um, so Gene's going to, no, I won't delete this stream. We'll keep this up. We'll keep talking because I think there's gold in them there hills. And uh, I think some people will really dig it. And in fact, anytime I'm running a calculator in a word pad and we got 350 people strong in the house, uh, I know that's going to be a good stream. It's going to be valuable for somebody to either dig through or uh, to either dig through or play back or just have in the group. Check, okay, check. Got you back. Got you back. Okay, Thanks. 650 watts for me. Um, you gave me some RZ diffusers to like cruise through the middle of here, trying to spread that those photons out. I was actually seeing over 900, like 910 hotspot in the center. Ah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I added four RZ diffusers to my little um, uh, Angelina reflectors. It smoothed this out. It bumped this up from 725 to 750. So it took micromoles from here, but it put them out here, which was cool. Um, and you can just stay unmuted, Gene. It's fine. We're just chilling, man. Like whatever, you know, that way we don't have to fucking worry about it. Yeah. Um, there's not too much sound over here. Anyway, we should be good with these numbers. I've been pulling on average of like two pounds, two mm -hmm. pounds of dried cannabis from a 650 watt light with canopy 10. Now with a similar photon output, you know, in your light being, I'm going to delete this cause I don't want it to confuse people, but, um, <laughs> what what do you think how do you think um you, you uh, should expect similar you're gonna you're putting similar energy similar light energy into the area so you're gonna get that same return back it might be slightly distributed because the canopy 10 being diy you have a slightly bigger platform you said it's like 40 inches plc6 is like a 24 24 25 inch fixture so you have a little bit of a little bit better distribution which could help up make help make up for some efficacy. Um, but again, you know, that comes at a cost. So I, everybody's asking me the distance. I, I put 20 to 24, but that's a blanket statement. I actually think I was running it closer to about 18 inches. Um, I'm, I'm very similar on that. Yeah, like 18. So let's call it 18 inches is what I was getting those numbers with and pulling two pounds. So yeah. And I tell people to 18, 24 inches, and then I go into my rooms and I'm like, oh, look at that. I'm at like 12 inches, 10 inches you know, in mid growth and, you know, fully deployed canopies, things like that. But, uh, but, um, but yeah, I, I run them pretty close. Cool. Green Gene, I'm going to stop my screen share. Yeah. Now I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Um, if you want to go into thermal or you want to show us the spectrum that your light's going to be putting out, we can talk a, a little bit about the spectrum and, and how photosynthetically active or action is going to be. Um, I'll be right back. Give me 30 your business, man. Good cool. luck. Oh, I like those stickers, chat. I'm sure all you guys in chat want some of those. But uh, but yeah, the PLC6, it's it's a great economical light. And it's all good and dandy. But in, in the end, it comes down to, you know, it, it is a Vero-based fixture with highly efficient drivers, highly efficient optics, and some good heat sinks that can really handle all the, amount of, all the amount of wattage, both thermally and light, that we're putting out of the system. So you guys at home, you, you can build a system that's just as high efficacy for a better value. Um, and probably have a little less system losses because I, I have protective lenses and, and reflectors and things like that. So long story short, the Vero seems to be the really, really best value out there for DIY. Everyone loves Cree. Um, there's nothing wrong with a Cree chip. It works fantastic. If you have them, you're not missing out on anything. Uh, we're just able to push a little bit more wattage and maintain that efficacy with Veros and some, some bigger chips, you know. It's, it's like bringing a pistol versus a shotgun, kind of the Vero's the shotgun in the sense that like it's a 250 watt COB and the 3590s are only 130 watts or so. So it's proportionally, it's, it's just undermatched. So 
anyway, these new these new chips, they're great for production guys like me who are building them for commercials. And they're honest, I think they're even better for DIY because I don't get a, like I used to get a great price on Cree compared to what you guys were paying. But I don't get that great price on Vero. So like what you see out there is what I'm paying for them, essentially. So it's good to just have the DIY world on this on the same page. All right, oh. I'm back. I missed it. Ah, that was quick, man. I didn't even get into anything. I was just talking about Veros and in general how I how they're nice and affordable and perform well. Well, I have a pretty high velocity stream, so I tend to evacuate pretty pretty, <laughs> pretty rapid rate. Um, so yeah, no, Veros are dope. Um, I always saw Veros as a second class citizen, and so as I'm like, guilty of it. I, it sometimes emotion kind of comes into it like you know i'm shopping for an audi a bmw and a mercedes right because i think that that uh analogy is is applicable here due to just the performance of these mm -hmm. chip on boards so you're shopping for them in my mind i see the the mercedes as possibly being the most elegant um but maybe a little bit of like a trailer princess i see the beamer as maybe being like the highest performance and cool and you know just awesome so and then you you know you got the Audi. So I'm over here looking at Cree being like the BMW in my mind, um, and the Mercedes you know is is elegant and all that stuff. I don't I don't know I don't know what would fit into that. But let's just say something else. And then I always looked at the Vero as like this Audi, which is cool and it's super good and everything like that. But like you know you put me in like a a, a nice Beamer and a nice Audi, I just feel cooler. Even in if the they're M5 the same. versus the uh, the A5, yeah. Sure, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, S5, the S5. The, the IS, S5, yeah, the IS, first. yes. I'll take a fucking M5 all day. But like that's an emotional response. So the first time I saw real lab numbers on these Veros was like this last week when you put out the 1.91 or 1.96, 1.97. Well, and that's the thing. There, there aren't too many of these lab numbers out there. And even back in Cree days, it took a while for us to get um, spectra radiometers back in like 2014 from them to you know verify the leer and the queer and um sorry uh but we never it wasn't as legit nowadays we've had um essentially i guess it would timber went into a sphere my units have been in a sphere johnson's old maximizer was in a sphere so we have citizen we have multiple cree datas and those cree datas were on different heat sinks so that provided some some good kind of thermal data for them um, but we haven't had anyone say, hey, man, I put my Vero 29 fixture or my Vero 18 or whatever, 22s, in a sphere and, and gotten anything back. So it, it's always been that. The numbers are good. And, um, you know, asymptotally, they, they perform really well. You see these Vero grows fantastically big nugs. I like, I'm thinking of like CD money on on the forums like has I, I just remember some really impressive colas. And I was always like, oh, yeah, dude, you're rocking. Vero. They obviously work. Uh, it was just always this constant argument of, Oh, Crees are so much more expensive and this and that. And performance wise, everyone is on a very, very similar page. Uh, we just start to getting to splitting these hairs of price and this and that. And like you say, emotional responses of brand. Um, how many times have you had people just constantly ask for Cree, even though you may suggest to them a different budget value or something like that? Um, just because it's it's that flagship, it's what we use for so long. It was kind of the the first in the door, I almost want to call it the Apple compared to like the Samsung, even though Samsung offers some amazing products in their phone, Apple's still kind of the, you know, the big showboat that everyone wants. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of go yeah. with it? So it, like I said, on, on the end of the day, a lot of these chips are very, very similar in end performance. And, and it's different in the sense that the CXB is a 100 to 130 watt chip, the Vero Bs and Cs are 230 to 250, the Citizens are 200, to plus, you know, they're just bigger chips and because they're so much more affordable we're able to use them like smaller chips and you know the theory of led the, 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 the constant theory that we're using is the more and more we underdrive and the less and less we stress the these diodes these semiconductors uh, the higher they perform cool right on man right on we got a few questions i want to just address verbally in the chat um so citizen 1825 great chip do we have any real data on it can we trust the calculations from the online tools I don't have any real data on it. I can, it, the, I've seen 1818 tests. Um, those are pretty decent. They're not, they definitely don't overperform their spec sheet. Um, so they're, they're okay. So I wouldn't expect it to be above or majorly below, but the thing with the, was it the 1825 or the 2518? I always get the numbers mixed, but, um, 
it, it's just a little pricey. It's a, it's a forty dollar chip, and that's even at like the distributor level. Like you know, even I get it for thirty nine or something. So as we're like Crees, when I'm paying thirty, and I was selling them for like thirty five, but unfortunately they were out there for forty forty five. That's it's just up there in price compared to these Veros, the 1818, which you can just underdrive and use a few more and you can get the efficacy and the price break. So, um, it's kind of how, how do you want to skin that cat? You know, it just, it's not the cheapest way to skin the cat. Sure. Um, trying to manage this question. So, okay. So citizen, here's the deal with citizen guys. Um, you know, back when I had two, three, four thousand 4,000 subs and stuff like that, I was just some nerd trying to figure this shit out, trying to save money for myself and saying, Hey, if you want to watch, go ahead and watch, do what I do. It's all good. I could talk shit. I could kind of take numbers off of forums and quote those as, as real numbers because A, I didn't know any better. And B, the responsibility wasn't there. You know, you could just call me a dumbass, dislike my channel, unsubscribe, and go about your merry way. Now things are getting a little bit more real. You know, Gene and I both sit around 20,000 subs. Gene's the owner of a company. I'm, you know, I'm freaking telling you to go to Cotter and Rapid and all these other places and stuff. We're on the round table. We just absolutely 100% cannot afford, nor would it be fair to the viewers to be taking forum numbers that are not verified by a, a, a professional company that stakes their reputation on presenting lab quality data. So the only thing I'm really comfortable talking about is sphere tests I've seen. That's not to say that these guys on the forums aren't doing great work and hypothesizing very accurate numbers. I, I yes. recognize that, like props. Mm -hmm. But at, at, we're kind of getting to a level where we just can't be talking out of our ass. It's bad press for PLC. It's bad press for me and the companies that I fucks with. And I just can't do it. So until I see citizen numbers, they're not in the conversation for me. But you could be very successful with them. Obviously. Couldn't, couldn't have said it better, man. And, th and that's it. It's, it's who's, who's got the verified third party. Send it off. No touching. Get it tested. Get it back. Those are the numbers that we like to work with because those are the numbers that when you buy or you make the light at the end of the day, those are the numbers that you're getting um, sure. factually, not should be getting, but you actually are getting those. So, you know, Ch Chilled's been great in the fact that they've bought up all these fixtures or however they're doing it, whatever. Um, but he's paying, the, paying for the testing and putting it out there and it, it's putting actual data out there for multiple fixtures um, so that we can look. And before that may have never happened and a great light may have been covered up or vice versa. Some light that be getting a lot of hype train uh, really just isn't performing to what it's either said to be or expected to be. Um, like the slip chip optos. Like I didn't see any lab tests on that, but those things could be the best fucking thing since sliced bread, but like we don't know. Exactly. I, I've seen one test and it was low. That was when they first came out, but it wasn't a um, it wasn't a full sphere. It was just more spectroradiometer data. And again, like you say, how how do you trust it if there's no standardized third party waiting um, way to show it? When like if you go out and buy a light bulb, you get X amount of lumens out of it. In the sure. horticulture world, it's it's only I, you know, all the big players are already it. It comes in PPF. How much PPF am I getting out of this product or this bulb? Um, and and that's that's what it comes down to. So. The more and more our industry gets legitimized and kind of integrated with the rest of the world that's already been doing it for so long, um, the less and less of these like exceptions of not playing by the rules is are are going to be around. Absolutely, absolutely, and it and it just it sounds it, okay. If you're listening right now <laughs> and you just typed a comment on one of my videos, Gromouse, where'd you get these numbers? Oh, let me get you a link to uh, rolledup.org. And what you're going to do is click this thread and it's on page 142. And the guy that did the test, his name was, uh, you know, Joe Schmo. And that's where you can find the numbers. Or does that sound better? Or I say, <laughs> go to lightlaboratory.com, click the contact tab, reference this report number, L0517025201, and ask mm -hmm. them to verify if this indeed was uh, tested and paid for by Pacific Light Concepts. I don't know if there's some privacy issue or whatever, but I would imagine you could track down the data a little easier in this manner. So, okay, we beat the shit yeah. out of that. What are they going to look like? Are they going to have like the built-in reflectors like this, kind of like a 90 degree kind of dealio? Yeah, there's a picture on the website. Those reflectors, those Justin's got old models. What we what we did with ETL essentially is we just had to add screws to the reflectors. So they got a little bigger, um, a little set, unset, but um, yeah, they'll be the, if you guys oh. have a current 
yeah, if you have a current 250 out there, it'll look just like that as far as the reflectors. Um, this is as big as I can make it right now. Here we go. Yeah, the picture's not that great, but that's the only picture I had. I just, and that's the, uh, I'm gonna call it okay, the good. prototype one. So nice uh, spacing in here. We could probably say what, like about five, five inches here, five inches there. Yeah, roughly. I, I think it's, it's yes, a little over six on, or right around six. Um, so we say about 15, in, 14, 15, 16 inch spacing somewhere in here, mm -hmm. spreading that light out. And so, uh, and so what we worked with is a bunch of commercial fix, a bunch of commercial growers who are using sodium fixtures, you know, tight greenhouse DE style, uh, reflectors, or one of the biggest competitors in, in our market, the commercial is the Lumitex power harvester. And it's not because it's, it's not an amazing light. It, it puts out like 1.8 or 1.6, but Illumitex has given deals on these babies to commercial growers like no other. And if it can cost, you know, 40% less to implement than another unit, whether it be old 250 bars or other things, um, that's what they're going with. It's, you know, it's the same reason they go with sodiums, even though they know in the back of their head we have the performance. It's because at the end of the day it was cheaper. Um, so if you can offer that performance at a lower cost, that's what's happening. So this this PLC six is kind of this is what you're talking about here. It's a little yeah, box. it's a very small fixture. It's actively cooled, um, produces decent, you know, good efficacy. It's very small fixture. Sig are they uh, using their Sigafoli diodes or whatever? Yeah, F three. Yeah, exactly. The F three. Um, yeah, actually, I want to say that it might be a little different in the power harvester. They were hung really high in the facilities I've gone to. Um, I have a few pictures. Okay, um, but uh, but you anyway. But like that, Spectrum King, the, these more one-for-one -one replacements um, that they're able to wheel and deal on. I don't know, the, the Spectrum King, I don't think, can wheel and deal as much on the price. But of course, every commercial, you know, when we're talking 20, 100, 200, 400 lights, we, you know, we get into discounts that aren't exactly retail, but um, it's all pretty consistent across the manufacturers. What model are there? Are there two models? There's a 400 watt lumen. There, there's yeah, the it's they have like a pH. It's the pH 10 or something. It essentially puts out a thousand micromoles and it's like 600 watts. I don't know. It, it doesn't appear to be on your page right now, but it's definitely more than 400 watts. It's uh, yeah. like 580 or something. Anyway, okay. it, 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 it's the pH 10 standing for power harvester 1000 micromole output. Gotcha. And um, we'll go, let's just go to the company website and see what's up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, there we go. Okay. So, so anyway, these, it for what, 1300, but exactly what are people I, paying for these a grand? I'm seeing 800 from certain people. So it's like, okay, okay. Same price um, not, not everyone's getting that this guy, you know, but yeah, definitely under a grand. Okay. So that's so what you're seeing out there. Exactly. And that, and that's it. And there's a few more, um, you know, a few more fixtures well, here and there that pop up on the commercial level pretty consistently. Well, let's talk about this because I mean, let's face it. Let's just get the elephant out of the closet, you know? Um, yeah. I'm working it's, with chilled and, um, you know, we're, we've, we're forging a relationship. I mean, I freaking stayed on Vitaly's couch the other week. And so, you know, now you're coming on the scene with a, a product that is priced to fucking sell. And so at some point we're going to have to talk about it. So why not just you and I talk about it face to face instead of me talking to my fans, you talking to your fans, which are the same people and then them losing shit in translation. So where exactly. is the graph that you posted the the comparison? Is that on your G Green Gene Instagram? Yeah, that's on Green Genes because PLC had to be neutral. Oh, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, well, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this metric, which is something I was trying to get to, but I kept flubbing up. Let me present myself. Okay, what are we looking at here? Okay, so you have, I'm assuming, my IG up. Yeah, unless you have a larger version of this that you can present. Um, um, I, I have the, let me see if I can pull it up because Jack, I have the ex, the extended version that has more the full complete. How are we doing here, chat? Gromouse yeah, and Vitaly sitting in a tree. Gromouse's articulation is awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll, articu I'll articulate those panties right off. Where are the gay elephants now? They're <laughs> <laughs> elephants are out of the closet. It's great. Uh, Shadonk's got a jet. Please talk about B versus C. Oh, what's better, Vero B or Vero C efficiency wise? I mean, Shadonk? the C is the C is yeah. He asked a bunch of times. The C is a bigger chip, so at the same wattage, it's going to be slightly more efficient. It's slightly. pretty minimal. Um, it's just more more epi or more, more chips on the same one. Uh, the issue comes with what fits with drivers. So 
um, being at close to 70 volts, the C doesn't always work with drivers. So if you're using a less efficient driver that, you know, it ends up canceling itself out. So between the B and the C, honestly, it's what works for your design. You're not going to be sacrificing anything major either way. There you go, Shadonk. Handheld service with a smile. Well, with a smirk from Green <laughs> Uh, Grow Mouse, you should put a donate button so people can donate to you. You can put it towards lights. Uh, oh, no, I appreciate that, Chrissy. I appreciate the idea that people would want to donate, but um, this information is free and uh, it will always be free. That was kind of my motto. And I wouldn't want to take a single dollar um, away from like a sub cool stream that's going to get donated to like a little girl, you know, that has uh, leukemia or something like that. So I, I, if you ever see a super chat, it's going to be for raising money for somebody else. I don't need the money. I don't need, I don't, I don't want your money. Um, okay. Green Gene, are you presenting? I okay, we're both presenting. Let's assume that the chat can see Green Gene's spreadsheet. Okay, uh, we'll, cat, we'll let chat catch up. Give me a big yes, chat, if you see this uh, well enough. And if not, Gene, I don't know if you could like command plus sign or something or get rid of that sidebar or something. Is that collapsible? There, there we go. Okay, there we go, gang. Where we go. They got it. Okay, chat's on board. <laughs> Soil Biota says, take that money, send it his way, Brosif. Uh, hey, we'll raise some money for the guru. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Hey, the guru can't find, like, biodynamically grown dank we, in his area. It's all this nutrient weed, and he can't smoke that. So we'll do a donation for the guru. So I bet it. All right. Green Gene, what are we looking at? Walk us through, walk us through these metrics. Oh, uh, did I mute you? Okay, you are muted, but go ahead and unmute yourself. There we go. Okay, okay. All Sorry, right. I didn't realize that. Okay, so what I got here is just a spreadsheet. I called it the top 10, but I do have down below here, I do have some other fixtures, HPS included, some other ones that just really didn't make the cut. Um, but what I have here essentially is the ones that I see the most out there in the field commercially. So not maybe not what you guys see, you know, on the forums or going at your hydro stores, but this is what a lot of the big facilities are using out there, implementing and, and doing it successfully. Um, despite, you know, which whichever one it is, they all they all seem to be fairly successful. So I have it broken down to some a few categories. The first one is kind of, I think, the topic what mouse is getting to and kind of what the new PLC six and this this price competitiveness is all about. It's the output per dollar. So how much output are we getting for how much dollars we're spending on a fixture? Um, okay, and okay. So I'm spending, I wanna spend $1. How many micromoles can I get is what this is showing? No, it's giving you, how, oh yes, exactly. So for $1, you're getting 1 1.4 on the top of the list and you're getting 0.69 micromoles for the bottom of the list there. Okay. So I go to so 7-Eleven, yes. I slap down a single dollar bill, and the guy hands me anywhere from 0.69 of a micromole to 1.41. Okay, got it. Continue. That's a, that's a great analogy. That's a great way to look at it. Um, the next the next column over is price uh, the price of the fixture. So how much does it cost? And this is a general retail cost, not quite MSRP, but the usual what they're selling at on their online stores except for the hoardy bar which technically i've seen retailed for 1600 um, but the only price i could find is there and it still falls in the middle of the the uh, list there so anyway those are the prices which you know that that's what matters that's what gets us that that figure of output per dollars and it also gets us how much how many leds we can afford based on our budget our coverage everything to do with it so price matters uh, next I, is I picked through, I'm sorry to interrupt. I yeah, picked through ahead, that with ahead. kind of a fine tooth comb. And um, for all practical purposes, I mean, we were definitely within like 50 bucks on these higher end fixtures, which is which would account for like 4% price flux, except for the next light mega. They have like this pretty high MSRP and guys are reporting getting them for between 15 and 1599. So that's the only one that's kind of significantly off. And if that was number two, I probably front, but I'm not fronting at all because it's yeah. Well, here let's let's change that right here. We don't have to do anything because I put it originally as 15, and then someone was like, oh, no, no, no. so 500. We'll put that right in there, and that changes it to 0.93. Let's redo this so they're descending, and it moved it up a few spots. So it moved from 
eight two to nine three. So you got an extra ten micromoles per dollar out of that, essentially eleven micromoles per dollar. Okay, got by you. getting a more consistent uh, what they're getting. But the same goes for some other fixtures in the list like that too. So Spectrum King, I imagine, is probably going for closer to thirteen. Sure. Oh, the six, yeah, the SK six, because because uh-huh. like if you use a crazy the Dago four, or Med Grower, you're going to get like five percent. Well, the, the four twenty sale they had it for twelve ninety nine, so I figure that's more their commercial rate. Okay, but that one's pretty low in the pack, and we need to look at the spear numbers on Chilled site in a minute, so we can just talk about this discrepancy. And that's where I got these. Um, so the numbers for the Spectrum King are corresponding between the tempo tests and their sphere tests that I've seen. Um, but this 1.6 is straight from that chilled, that chilled, uh, God, is it CSA report? Um, the lab yeah, up there? Is it CSA? Yep. Yep. So that's from there. Uh, Illuma Texas from them. Uh, the thing I have with fluence is we've seen fluence, uh, you know, with the older models register a little lower in the sphere. So I, I don't know. Some of these aren't, um, like fluence isn't a perfect sphere number that I've seen, but I do trust fluence and know their numbers allegedly come for us from a sphere, just as Nextlight does. Nextlight obtains their numbers by testing their boards and then multiplying it out to a full fixture, is what I was told. So you know, I there got an be- email from. I'm sorry, I, am I interrupting your flow? Let me let you go through that. Go through. No, it no, no. Tell us, no, you're through- not at all. So that I'm just, I'm just kind of blabbing as far as like prices and how that, how they can fluctuate. So anyway, long story short, this list is just a general of what we can see out there. You can probably do better, but that better is going to be somewhat consistent throughout all of the all the manufacturers here as far as price. Next one over, we go to efficacy. I don't think it's that important. It's nice to know how efficient your fixture is and. And and that is important. But as far as this list and and setting up a facility, it's not the major factor here so much as the next column of total output, because at the end of the day, we've spent a price, we expect to get an output. And that's what's giving us our value. And and in the end, our growth and being able to say, hey, this light was successful because it put out X amount of light and grew us X amount of bud or Y amount of bud. Cool. I found found an email from Fluence um, in preparation for the uh, the the um, quantum board video or whatever i emailed fluence and was like look guys i'm doing a video i know you have not wanted to be this full disclosure in the past but i really need this so i don't have to speculate they replied back almost instantaneously and said no need to speculate we use s6 flux bin samsung diodes and we'll always pursue the best components that's yeah. what's used today uh, but that might not be what we'll use tomorrow so that could be some differences in in the fluence um you know, it, it might have been an S5 and now they've got the yeah. S6s because they're so hard to get. But I uh, just want to chime in on that. So continue. no, that's that's good info. And and like I said, that's the one company that I don't have a third party data from other than the one from the old spiders, which were not using the Samson diodes. They were using Osram diodes. So uh, I can't correlate that. And I didn't want to. So I just had to take Fluence's data. But I've seen results from Fluence. I've been to Fluence facilities. I've tried to pitch Fluence facility, you know, like they have results they're put they have great paper results they have great real results it's a good light um but for certain facilities you know being five percent more efficient seven percent more efficient for 100 percent more the cost or 75 percent more the cost that's what kind of this this new push right now for me at least in leds is for and and also i think users users are just you're always who doesn't want to pay less right that's just that's just human nature Okay, so let's just, just for the folks over here that don't know micromoles and all that bullshit. So you got a chart here with a bunch of LEDs. Yours is on the top. Um, and then the bottom one's the SK600. And then the price next to it is variable. So your results may vary based on like how many hand jobs you can give these companies to get a better price or who you know. Exactly. And then you have to see the actual rate is there. So you're taking efficacy, which we've talked about in detail. You're multiplying it by the draw wattage. You're coming up with the total output. And and you're and you're getting all these numbers, and so and actually to, to even say that even further, if they give a total output without the efficacy, I disregard the efficacy entirely and only take their their output. So if their efficacy come, you know, if they're stating five hundred and their efficacy turns out to be four ninety eight or five ten or something, like I I just take the total output because that's what they're stating. So that's why I'm saying the efficacy is not the major the major factor here so much as the total output of how much light you're getting to play with. Okay. So just run through. 
we got your new product that's going to be coming out very soon. It's eight. It's seven seven hundred ninety nine dollars and zero cents. One point four one micromoles for every dollar that you spend on the light, but you got to spend almost eight hundred bucks. Stop toggling. I'm talking. I'm clicked on you. I'm talking to you. Oh, you're reading oh, chat. I okay. was reading chat. My apologies. When okay, you talk, I read chat. So <laughs> okay. I forgot. I'm, I'm, I'm referencing your sheet so everyone can see what I'm talking about. Okay, Fluent. Uh, we're talking the Viper X, which is their linear bar. We're not talking spider. We're talking Viper here. Those are 950 bucks. If you buy a bunch of them, you know, you can get scaling discounts. That's right on the website. Really nice efficacy, really nice output. 515 watt draw. Um, so you actually have to spend more money uh, at that 7-Eleven and you're only getting 1.14 micromoles for each dollar you're, you're spending. And then it kind of goes down from there. What's this? A, a Philips Agro uh, so that, CMH? Those are the, so that's the one non-LED in the list. I was going to let you finish before I brought it up. And that is a 315 watt ceramic um, metal halide in a vertical fixture with a square wave ballast. Oh, okay. So, so I can get that cheaper. I only have to let go of $450 but for that 450 i'm only getting 1.09 micromoles back per dollar and you're only getting 337 watts so we can we can take that and multiply it by two compared to the more you know we're trying to get to these 630 ceramics especially you know ones that are using two bulbs um and technically the bulb eats a little more but um but nonetheless it, it does stay at that value uh the value changes a little bit but the efficacy stays right there at 1.46 and then the rest, um, hmm, now, okay. Now the Fluent Spider X Plus is less than one micromole per dollar? That is confusing to me because I always recommended Fluent Spider X as being pretty top of the line. I mean, it's got the S6 Samsungs, it's got the Osram Reds. I mean, like walk me through this. What is making this value low? Is it, oh, because it's 1500 bucks. It's fifteen hundred dollars. So that's what the that's where the Viper X comes into play. They're similar fixtures in the sense they are using the same components. They're using Samson, uh, apparently S six bins as well as. Uh, do we know what reds they're using? Are they still using Osram Hyper Reds? Uh, I believe so. I mean, I've got some okay. here. Anyway, same same spectrum, same components, just built into a little different platform. Uh, a single platform, not as many heat sinks, not as many uh, components, uh, connectors, all these kind of things add up to a more economical build, which in turn is a more economical price for you. The kind of, what am I going to say, drawbacks here, I guess, would be is is in that Viper, it's a very thin, um, long, narrow fixture. The Spider has the benefit of being able to distribute the PPFD uh, very efficiently and very even. So it's kind of the the pole and I have a similar thing with my bar system versus this new light like uh, it's almost twice as much too and it, it comes back to the same way as the cost of implementation okay and, let me and let that's me the major that difference for a moment yeah uh, six stream um we're kind of still talking about uh Veros a little bit I mean <laughs> six is Veros um and I think this will be really helpful to people that uh you know want to know how these Veros, either in their DIY build or in a fixture they're going to buy, whether that's a timber um, or a, um, what was that other one that was using the 90 watt area 51 or a PLC. Um, we want to give equal mic time to these other companies that are doing Vero because you're not reinventing the wheel here, but what you're doing is. And I think Rapid's got a Vero kit. I've been seeing some people with too, right? Rapid. Yeah. Rapid selling Vero, but you're, you're taking a, uh, you know, you're taking a, a wheel that's performing better than we thought and you're you're selling it for a price that I think people can afford. Um, so where will you go to your spreadsheet for a brief moment? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. And, I'm, and I'm still sharing. Incrementally lower the price of mm -hmm. the Spider X Plus until we reach at least 1.3, 1.4 micromoles for every dollar. So let's go down to a $1,200 price point. Oh, that's probably, I'm just going to... Okay. Yeah, you're probably pretty good. Let's go with Thal. Oh, okay, so we'll go uh, 1050. 1050. Okay, let's go, go. Let's go 10 and 10, 1025. Okay. okay, so a thousand, maybe a thousand forty dollars. Thousand fifteen. Thousand ten. Yeah. Anyway, it's right. Okay. It's right in there. Okay. So at a thousand bucks or something like that, or a thousand, we'll call it a we'll thousand. 
Let's call it thousand. Okay, so yeah. we we need a significant price drop on the fluids too, uh, just so people understand these numbers on the left don't mean that like the performance is bad. The performance here is awesome. It's constant uh, for all these fixtures. The performance isn't changing. Right. Put, put, show, put your mouse or the cursor over the performance, the efficacy and the, uh, there we go. Okay. So it just means that like you're, you're kind of paying a premium. So your value now, what mm -hmm. this chart does not explore is spectrum and spread. Yes. And that's, that's and those just, are a little bit subjective. They are. So it's hard to, hard to really quantify and, and put into a metric that I can compare with that. Um, okay. I, let me make sure we're not losing people. Um, yeah. THC force ghost has to go to dinner. So hopefully he'll, he'll watch that later. Have a great dinner. Um, rapid only sells 3,500 K Veros SC. So, um, well, they do sell a few different voltages, but, but maybe their flavor is a little limited. So Christy's saying she got lost. Um, so sorry, Christy, we'll, we'll try to pull it back in and maybe, make it a little bit more um for yeah, i mean to get you off off track here bro sure um dab cookies is saying you'd need to buy two vipers to hit the coverage of a spider x great fucking point um where else are we um influence does make smaller wattage they make a smaller wattage viper a 300 that you could put two 300s over a four by four and get a better coverage and a little bit better wattage and efficacy than the plus, but the value is not there. And then you're spending even more than you would on a spider, um, right. spider plus that already has that kind of built in. So fluent system has some fallbacks in it, uh, that kind of, you know, one, one of their products kind of catches the shortfallings of the other and vice versa. So, well, let's look know. at two light fixtures. Let's, let's move away from your chart, which is great. It yeah. shows you the value photon value of lights, but there mm -hmm. are other factors. So let's look at two popular fixtures that in my mind are uh, sort of dominating. Well, they, well, maybe they're not dominating, but if I, was, if I couldn't build lights in 2016, which is when I made this chart, um, I, would, I was kind of looking at these two. You got the Next Light Mega with the Samsung diodes. You've got the Fluence Spider X Plus with the Samsung diodes with the enhanced red, and you see that enhanced red here in the spectrum. Um, Obviously, this one is listing for sixteen ninety five, but people are quoting they're getting for fifteen to fifteen ninety nine. Um, kind Buffalo hit you with the website or the question? Yeah, um, hit me with a website question. Tag tag me and Green Jeans, Kind Buffalo. I'd love to get to your question. I just uh, I just didn't I didn't catch it the first time around, buddy. But we'll we'll get you. Um, just got a razor from Fluence Ghost Grown Ghost Grown Medicine on Instagram. He, uh, he buys a lot of lights and he's got a lot of tech over there. Definitely worth a follow. So check him out, guys. Um, okay, okay, real quick, and we're going to pull this back in. Um, if I was looking at these fixtures, you know, Gene, just moving away from your chart and talking about practical application, spectrum, and spread, um, you know, these are approximately the same price. These are approximately the same efficacy. This one has a better warranty. This one's lighter weight. Um, and this one publishes a BTU output, which I can assume is approximately the same. Um, but your advantages here on the fluence is you're getting a bigger light, a much bigger light, actually. Um, shit. Nine, what was that? Seven inches bigger, basically. Um, bigger spread, more even spread, same price, a little better spectrum. We talked about bumping out this chlorophyll peak out here. Um, so you're kind of getting that. Now, this one is, uh, appears to be normalized. And this one appears to be, um, what's the other, what's the opposite of normalized? Absolute. Absolute. Okay. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at these and I'm looking Un, like, oh, the unnormalized maybe. Unnormalized. <laughs> yeah. uh, Fluence is putting out a PPFD average of about 900, uh, which is what they're quoting. But again, they're, they're, they're quoting these numbers at six inches from the canopy or maybe a foot or something. So um, I don't know why I'm going into this. Uh, oh yeah, I'm going into this because this website published a BTU and someone was asking about BTU, how much heat is, uh, how much heat are these lights and how much heat are these Veros and stuff putting out? Well, oh, you're let me go. Yeah, sorry. I was muted. I'm actually going to share my screen one more time here. And that was the other column on that chart after wattage draw, uh, we go energy reduction, the number of those fixtures needed to get to 30 DL, 30 moles DLI, which is 700, an average of 700 PPFD, 
So it shouldn't be too hard for a lot of these fixtures to do. And the last column is BTUs per four by four setup. So based on how many of those fixtures we need to reach that DLI or that intensity, which for most of these on the list is just one, so it's, it's not a big issue there. Um, how many BTUs of heat each one of these is gonna be putting out? And because their wattage varies slightly, uh, even though they're all meant for the same thing, they all put out just a little bit different um, amounts of BTUs. And so that's the last column here, I. I'm muted, okay, gotcha. So um, that, that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty consistent. That's gonna be based off of like wall plate efficiency and efficacy, like how much heat, <clears throat> excuse me, how much energy is going to heat directly in the heat sink and how much energy is going to photons, which, I mean, at the end of the day, physics tells us like preservation of uh, energy and stuff. Like it's all going to become heat eventually, but those more efficient fixtures, um, they do seem to have a little lighter number here, right? Like look at the mega 2.15 and 2200 BTU. So, well, it's uh, the, it, really all that BTU calculation is, is a, uh, a function of the total wattage. So this isn't this BTU output isn't accounting for light energy versus heat sink heat. This is total total what your environment is going to have to deal with and what your cooling systems are going to have to to handle. So this is just, you know, if it's a 500 watt fixture, that's 500 times 3.412 and, you know, whatever that came out to be would be in this end column. So that this is for when you're building a room and you have x amount of these lights, what's the total heat load that that, that environment's going to going to have to handle? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, I am. Somebody else asked an interesting question about, um, you know, people maybe wanting to like just kind of copy your design and, and build it themselves. I mean, yeah, not not something you've really shied away from in the past, right? I showed you guys how to build PLC two fifties long before I put them out, and uh, it was the same concept. It's just just essentially wiring uh, COBs. I, I use a 600 watt driver, so I'm wiring in parallel versus a lot of you guys out there into constant current. So, um, or it's, it's all constant current, but series series wiring. And uh, so that might be a slight difference, but yeah, it, it's totally something you guys can look at. You see it out here. Uh, I'm not gonna be totally like, hey, do it, but it's not hard to do and you guys can definitely build it. Um, I'm looking we're not at gonna some... make a video saying like, hey, uh, we're in business to make money. Um, but here's exactly how to build our light with all the links. So please just go build it and don't buy our lights. Like, I mean that. Well, we I actually thought that. about doing that. I'm actually debating on doing that, but with a 480 version instead of a 600 and then maybe giving it away, do a little video build and then give it away. But um, it's a possibility, you know, I don't know. Not, okay. not completely off, but yes, I do want to protect a little bit of what the time and energy I put into to test it, to build it. It didn't just like come out and this isn't the first, you know, prototype of it. So yeah, I put a little work into it and have the testing and everything. So I want, want a little credit for it, but I do want to see you guys out there successfully. And uh, when I bring that up, I, I do see a couple, like, I don't want to say competitors, but some DIY offerings of some six Vero kits out there. And, and honestly, they're, the prices are up there. Um, the Cree version of the same thing is actually cheaper and it's, so, so just know what you're getting. Um, and I think if you follow what Mouse is about to do here with yeah, his, and his upcoming builds to, to clarify Veros and to clarify quantum boards and what he's already kind of done with um, the chilled setup, and I'm sure he'll have a clarification video on that as well, even further. So you follow him, you'll get the information um, needed to do exactly what you want to do on a DIY level. And I'm always here spilling the beans from whatever I can see, whatever I can give back on legitimate data and help. I think we have the chat and all the followers out there covered on getting some great Vero technology. And if Citizen comes out with something else, we'll you know we'll be up on that as well as when Cree gets you know the fire lit under their ass to to step it up again. We'll continue to to push the data out there, and I'll I'll do what I can on the to use PLC dollars to get some testing and whatever else we can get done. You know, I mean that's fair. Like there's just honestly there's too much there's too many options out there to really promote anything as best. People have always tried to box me in as like best, and like I'm to the point now where it's just like I've got too many relationships with these people. Like I'm friends with Chilled. And I'm friends with you and I'm friends with Robin and I'm friends with Steve and I'm friends with Dan over at Timber. And uh, to be quite honest, like I've always been friendly with Bobby over at cobkits.com. And it's like, you know, you kind of just have to just talk about the technology and let people make their own decision. But, but like, I don't, I get it. Like you want to know what's best. Um, so I don't know. 
I, yeah, I think yeah. the way I'm going to go with it is just be like, look, I can't discriminate against anybody. I got to talk about all this shit. Um, and yeah, that is the way it is. So um, I'm going to, well, actually, yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll you tell you what. You carry on. I think, I think I've kind of put in plenty of information on my side on the Vero to get you at least started. My, my sphere data, if you want to check out my Ganyo, I'll send that to you too. Um, it's in lumens, but I'll give you the conversion factors. But uh, yeah, that that is out there for you to play with and um, and to do what you what you need to do. And if there's any clarification needed, hit me up and I'll, I'll do what I can. Um, but other than that, man, thanks for thanks for doing what you do for the the DIY world and always being a cool dude to me on top of it. Yeah, appreciate it, man. And uh, I, I typed you a little thingy here in our Google Plus. Do you do you have a moment for that or um, for, for what? I'm um, let me pull up that chat room. Yeah, quick. pull that up. It just I just want to catch you right before you go. Or if you have to go, it's totally cool. Um, or you want to skip that? I don't, no, I can I can go. That's right. fine. Well, let's right. see who asked this. Was this real? I don't even, I don't even know exactly what you what you priced it at. Yeah, yeah people price what we're what talking about. about. Oh, people like if you. How much you're people want to know how much you're making on these things versus if they should just build it themselves or buy it. And so I priced it out and we're going to talk about it because I've got you captive and well, now you don't right. have a choice. Yeah, so, let's do it. I'm down. This is fine. Here we go. Price it out at rapid. Now, if you buy the uh, oops, I got to I got I got to X that out. Oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. I had that added. So where are we at? Six, 650 bucks is what it's going to cost you in parts to build a PLC six that you can buy for seven ninety nine. So if you buy all this shit at Rapid, um, you've got your substrate with three brackets, and um, I guess I should have added a hanging kit for ten bucks. But it's going to cost you basically around one hundred and thirty dollars in either metal from Home Depot, or like metal from a water jet place, or eighty twenty extrusions, or this thingy from Rapid that we're calling canopy substrate. One hundred and thirty in that. You're going to need six pretty big pin heat sinks. So those are going to be nineteen bucks a piece. That's one hundred fourteen. You're going to need six reflectors. So that's going to be 48 bucks with the associated Vero 29 adapter hardware, which is not easy to come by. Now, yours is a single driver setup, but I put two HLG 320s in here at 100 each. And I at think the DIY that, level, honestly, that's about what a 600 is going to cost you. 600 is like 195 bucks on like onlinecomponents.com. So this is like five bucks I more have to, to do buy many thing. of them. And they are honestly, it costs me so much to ship them from the distributors just to myself that the price go it's they're just such beasts. Um, anyway, that's actually a pretty accurate price, either two threes or six. That's that's pretty accurate. If you're building it yourself, why not go with the two threes? That way, if one blows up or like you got a little flexibility or whatever that is. So that's 200 and drivers. And then, you know, the cobs are 27 bucks a piece when you add the Molex connector or 20 yeah, or if you get the SEs or whatever, so one hundred sixty-two dollars in cobs. So, um, and I do course, suggest the SEs. If you guys are out there, they're very nice. The push connectors are very nice. You can take them apart. Um, and it's just a nice little, a little added bonus. And uh, the Vero over the Cree, not having to buy the the holder, I really like that. And if you add Grow Mouth Five, check out. You're gonna say thirty-two dollars and sixty cents. There you go. So I can build your light for six hundred nineteen dollars if I want to build it myself. And if I made, let's say I made $15 an hour, which is, you know, kind of what some people in the country make, I think I could probably do it in four hours. So that's 60 bucks worth of my time. I could go to work and bring home 60 bucks, or I could make this light and save 60 bucks, you know, six half dozen, one or the other. So you add 60 to that, you figure you're between 620 and 680. So and that's before shipping, I'm assuming, right? That's before shipping. So we're going to have to ship this thing. So we take your light, which is $799, and we subtract, let's just say, you know, given options, we'll just say uh, options, shipping, et cetera. We'll just subtract the 650 which is probably what is really going to cost you to build this thing. So you're charging a $150 premium for your product over what you could do to build it yourself, and you're getting what? What do I get for my 150 bucks? Well, essentially, you get a five-year warranty. It's undergoing ETL certifications. So it'll be ETL for horticulture and wet, envir wet and damp environments, just like the 250. Um, you're getting fully protected um, water resistance, so you can spray it with your sprayer. You can spray it with a hose. You can do just about anything to it. Um, I haven't done the chilled test to it and dropped it in the badass tank, but uh, if, as for the purposes, it, it's it's a very um, 
high quality build, to totally aluminum frame. So you're getting extra sinking from the housing, built in reflectors. So they're not going to break, bend. Um, they're also protected by glass lenses on top of that high transmittance glass, which isn't a part of those builds. So you, your, your COBs aren't protected in any way on the DIY, which, you know, if I was on the DIY, if I was one of you guys, I would pop the lenses off at PLC six in the second flat. So that's a, a moot point, but uh, that is what you're getting with the product as well as you're getting uh, whatever power cords you want, hangers, um, hanging kits, all that, all that's included. And I'm, I don't know what exactly Joe's doing behind the scenes, but usually we, especially on the like first couple batches, shipping's been included for that. So, you know, cool. Um, so that's what you're getting. It's it, the, you know, Hey, if you, if you don't have much to worry about and you, you're very handy and whatnot, you can go out there and build it for yourself and save, save a couple hundred bucks or right about 150 bucks. But if you do want the, uh, the commercial version, that's, that's exactly what you're getting. You're getting every bit those extra features. And then what we're coming out with and what we've talked about, and I don't want to say it's for sure because we've got to make sure it integrates well, but I'm trying, Growlink's been so busy. We are trying to make it, you know, app controllable, fully dimmable from anywhere in the world, as well as, you know, full regions on that. I've been trying to work with them for, since that uh, marijuana business convention a year ago almost, um, but just getting the product to be priced right so we can keep this, uh, the price, but even, you know, for 25 bucks more, I feel like a lot of people 25, 30 bucks more, they would, they would pay to have that feature. Cool. So $150 premium for the PLC six over what it would cost you to build yourself. Now that's factoring in shipping, but I did not factor in any time. Five-year warranty IP 67, larger thermal mass, glass cover for foliar spray, a case, obviously a powdered coat, uh, power cord and hangers. It's fused and a dimmer. Yep. Okay. So you're being pretty aggressive on the price. That's pretty cool. So I think it's neat. I think it's awesome. I mean, I know this kind of sounds like a PLC commercial. Uh, and that's I know, fine. dude. Thanks for, thanks for putting the attention out there for it. But I, I don't it's want, like, I'm always good. about to be the DIY. I'm never going to say, like, oh, my fixture is better than a DIY of the exact same components. Yes, it has more to offer for the dollar. But, like, in the end of the day, it's about getting the results in your garden. And, and my, my goal is to get it out there in these, these giant commercial gardens that 100, 200, 300 lights so, you know, for me to show one or two guys in the closet how to build it, I don't feel like I'm undermining myself in any way. Sure, I'm sure one of them, one or two of them will eventually go start their own company and be a competition. But it's, again, about getting the information and the success of LEDs out there for you guys. Yeah. And, and I think this might get into sticky ter territory, putting one company owner talking about specifically about another company, even though we've kind of done that a little bit. But like what this is about is it's not about a plc commercial what it's about is a fair price point for 2017 tech and i am so tired of seeing people buy epa stars you know that are paying a dollar per like half micro mole when they can I was, get uh, yeah i was just looking at the mars pro fixtures just out of curiosity because i made a comment like hey plc is coming into mars pricing now and uh no joke, like we're honestly not very far off Mars pricing, especially for their pro models and to offer, you know, full 600 watt lights at, you know, 1.9 plus efficacy. That's, that's what the industry needs for serious adoption to take place and for serious conversations of growers, you know, who aren't financially on the top of the game, but aren't poor, you know, it lets it get talked about by a lot bigger population and the options out there. And so that's, I think that's my goal. Or is my goal? I think it's fantastic. No, I mean that. That's why I'm giving it so much attention because I I realize there's 356 people in here now. 3,000 people will see this, and the type of people that are going to make it to the end of this thing, what they should take away with this is do the math. Insist that these LED companies start telling us what kind of if they don't want to tell us what kind of engine it is, at least give us the fucking horsepower and the torque so that we can as like. Like these people, I'm just, it, it infuriates me because it's like, oh, these stupid stoners, you know, they're just going to get a tent and hang it up in their closet. They don't even know what a micro mole is. And, and that's my whole modus operandi. I want to show people we do know what this stuff is. We know how it works. We know how to build it better, faster, and cheaper. And if you keep selling, excuse me, kind XL5 1000s for $1,800 motherfucking dollars, that are performing at one third the value per photon as a light like this or a light like a quantum board or a light like a chilled board or some, you know, something where these people are telling you what it puts out. Um, bottom, it's just bottom of my list. It's 
criminal. It's so bad. And it's like, it, it hurts me deeply because when I don't, when I type out brother and I say bro and, you know, and I say all this kumbaya shit, I'm not making it up to try to get more subscribers. I, anyone that grows cannabis in a responsible manner, I deeply care about that person. You know, I know this sounds a little mushy and stuff like that. And when they get ripped off, they're working hard. A lot of them are, are breaking the law in countries and states and they're risking their family and their possibly child protective services and, you know, coming in and taking their kids. They're putting a lot at risk and they're earning this money and they're literally setting hundred dollar bills on fire by buying this bullshit LED technology based on the strength of a magical spectrum and a perfect growth spectrum and the kindest yields and all this bullshit. It infuriates me. So well, here, I'll, I'll do it. I'll be that guy. So on the bottom of my list, I don't know if you're presenting me or not, but I do have other options. Um, and the kind XL with their sphere result or sphere report allowed me to put them on there and they are 0.45 micromoles per dollar. It's going to cost you $1,895. I imagine you get that a little less. So it's the lowest on the list as far as output per dollar, the most expensive on the list as far as retail, the lowest on the list as far as efficacy. So the amount of output per dollar, you're only getting 1.3 compared to, you know, 1.97 for the super value high efficacy or 2.1, or 2.2 for some of the highest end efficiency systems. And uh, that really is about it. And it's going to cost you uh, still the most wattage of them all too at 650 watts. So gotcha. it's just in the numbers. That's, that's not so much opinion as it is. Those are the numbers. And so to see people buying systems that perform so low, it hurts our feelings and it hurts. It, it's, it's sad. It's sad. Right. That's the whole community. And honestly, it's less weed to smoke. <laughs> it's less weed in the world. It hurts you gets. guys. Yes. Yeah. No, it hurts us all because then bags, the homies bags are getting emptied faster and not to say that you can't grow the dank like i've seen some of the dankest fucking buds ever grown under a kind led like if you know what you're doing and you've got the strains fuck yeah you can grow the dank under a kind under a mars under whatever but um they just ain't much in the bag you know what i'm saying yeah now the hps are still a better value you still get more well that you still no. get more photons per dollar just because no. of the nature of LEDs are expensive. They are. So a single ended sodium is still, you know, you're still basically twice the photons per dollar. So it's, it's tough to compete with, but that's where the other factors of heat and uh, energy savings and, and spectral quality increases in your crop. That's where those, those secondary factors start to, you know, sure. So if you're starting up an op on a really limited budget, you know, the, the thousand watt HPS SE, is twice as many photons per dollar as your light mm -hmm. or fucking any other light and the gavitas or the um what's why do i keep saying gavita what's oh excuse me it's uh de um de is actually around two times as much and the single ended is almost four times or not four times but uh About like three and a half times i guess uh more value so yeah right. the de is a little um the single end is the most value, the DE is the most output. So it's the same same thing we're talking about between systems. Yeah. I can't, uh, Wilma420, thanks for joining us. I don't recognize your name as a regular, but um, uh, I'd like to welcome you and in, in, into our community and, and learn about LEDs. And I get this question a lot. Check out the Perfect Sun website, which is another fellow YouTuber. Um, mm -hmm. And he claims to the best in the world. And, and he does this uh, long videos explaining that. Um, I want to say that I do have a tremendous amount of respect for the hustle and another YouTube entrepreneur, which is you know kind of what we're trying to be. But uh, those perfect sun Goliaths and all those perfect suns, those are all uh, Epistar Bridge Lux uh, light engines uh, that are in those lights. I've seen the insides of those lights. I've communicated with multiple people on Instagram that have hacked them and, and replaced them with cobs. And essentially, it's the same light engine as a, a kind or a Mars. There's nothing special about those lights. So um, that Wilma, I don't mean to call you out. Like I said, you're, thank you for joining our community here. But that is what a marketing strategy can do. It can make you think a light that has a little Honda engine has a V8 and it doesn't, you know? So yeah. Yeah, that, that light's not very good. And it's not, it's, it's just, just doesn't have the umals. Why do we use the terms Bridge Lux and Epistar? Uh, <laughs> I know, especially uh, now that we're talking how great Veros are, right? Why do we use the terms Bridge Lux and Epistar so interchangeably? 
because there are two companies that are known for mass producing LED chips. And I'm talking, you know, just the wafer and they sell it and distribute it to many different companies as well as repackage it themselves and companies that are using older, shittier technology, or even at the time was good technology, like the slug packages we talked about in the like tech talk revival episode or whatever the hell the, um, LED state of the union, we talked about the different packages of LEDs. And so with a poor package and a mediocre chip, you end up with this completely average at best chips. And these are the Epistars and bridge Luxes that we've been referencing as well as have been used. And, and it just comes from the fact that it's a generic statement. Um, these are, you know, bridge Lux and Epistar are making these dyes and these chips, but they're not their best it's not the best they can do, but it's what they sell the most of and what they kind of get known for. Just how Cree is known for really high output LEDs. Well, they also have a bunch of crappy ones too. So, you know, they're not everyone's perfect. They just get known for these, these niches. And uh, yeah, Mouse has a great presentation there. Um, anyway, Bridgelex Epistar, well known for, for making chips for these kind of lesser quality packages. That was a question and, uh, coming from Real Rasher. I think you know him. And so... Uh, here, right here, is a Bridge Lux 5 watt, and then this is an Epistar 3 watt. So, to answer my own question, thank you, Gene, you gave us a great answer. But to put a visual to it, that's why we use the term interchangeably because they're the same fucking thing, uh, practically, you know. And if you want to know about your um, your perfect son Goliath, if you want to know about your kind, um, if you want to know about your uh, platinum, if you want to know about your Mars. Um, and all that stuff you want to know about that technology. Um, this here you go. That technology was um, was invented around 1999. Um, it had some advances all the way up until 2007. You want to talk about lush lighting? You know, hasn't changed their model in six years. Uh, he admitted that on sub cool stream. If you haven't changed your model in six months, you're already um, plateauing. Let's put it that way. To be fair. Yeah. That's dead on, man. Yeah. Stuff moves so, quick. Yeah. If you're talking Perfect Sun Goliath, you're talking about a technology that had its last major advance in 2007. And I think that was about the time when Philips started licensing that technology or um, something like that. I, there's some bullshit about that. So, yeah, I, I'm sorry for being, I really don't like to take this to a place that I would term negative or, or so, you know, sounds pretty emotional, but um, I do get emotional about it because these marketing strategies are so aggressive um, and they're so um, and they've gone on for so long uncorrected or unchecked you know, exactly unchecked. no one has chance. ever spoken up about them so you know when you have five years of you know even though it's bad results but that's just how the industry works and how all these companies have developed it's just poor practice well, both Green, Gene, and I are going to go ahead and sign off this, on the stream. We're both got to head uh, to our respective Academy Sports and Outdoors so we can buy protective cups for our junk so that when we go to the trade shows, we don't get dick punched by these companies that are selling you bullshit at an inflated price. So, Green, Gene, oh. uh, final words? No, nah, man, thanks for having me on. I'm, like I said, I'm glad we got to talk about uh, some products like that. That was very fun. Thank you. And thanks, for Chad, for hanging out. For Green Gene and Grow Mouse, we want to remind you that no matter what technology you buy, just do the research and know what you're buying before you buy it. And uh, that's it for tonight. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you soon.